Good morning and welcome to Lake Pushin in Slovenia to the European Canoe Marathon Championships 2015. This is the final day in a row of three and today, uh, today's morning we will have two uh, races ongoing on this beautiful course in excellent condition and that is um, K2 Men Juniors and C2 Men Juniors. <coughs> My name is Stefan Gustafsson and I will, together with uh, Ivan Lawler, guide you through this morning session. These guys are um, paddling uh, six laps for the K2 men juniors on a course that is uh, four kilometers. And these six, on each of these six la laps, except the first, is um, a, a portage. A portage is where the paddlers uh, run across um, land uh, for 100-150 meters or so and then jump into their boat boats again. After, after the six full laps of four kilometers they are doing a final 500 meter lap. For the C2 men juniors it is five laps but the and the same concept. Ivan, this uh, looks uh, pretty good. It's 20 boats and the um, Many of them are uh, very, very good athletes. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about the junior versus senior level of education and level of experience, but having watched the, the junior men's K1 yesterday, we were both massively impressed by that. The quality, not only of the paddlers themselves, but of the way they raced. And uh, a lot of those paddlers are here again today in the K2, and it's gonna be a, a very exciting race. As ever, we've got Hungary, Leading off the start, that's Fazikas and Petro. And uh, they won't be keeping up that speed for too long. All the boys pretty much in touch. A couple of stragglers out the back. But uh, as they work their way up the course, they'll organize themselves into groups. We've got a couple of the big names from yesterday in there. Magnus Gregory, the winner from yesterday. <coughs> He's partnered up with his club mate from Longridge Canoe Club. Luke Harding, and they're in a yellow boat. They're making their way across to Fazikas and Petro to make the most of the wash hanging. And uh, <coughs> we also saw uh, D D Daniel Berger and uh, Ludwig Horn from Germany, boat number three, 310 up there in front now in the first couple of hundred meters. Also Croatia was there. Uh, a little bit surprising, Croatia, Frein Buljan and uh, Jakov Radovic, Radosevic. And they've done very well. They just got squeezed off that lead wash by the Great Britain pair. They've got quite a lot of experience in marathon racing. They took it very calmly, ducked around the back, and came up the safe side of the Hungarian. So we've got Hungary leading, Great Britain on their right, Croatia on their left, and the Danes cleverly tucked in the back there in the diamond wash. But it, nothing's safe yet. You can see the big, the big group on the right coming across. They're also going to be fighting for those places. And there we've got a bit of coming together. Get a lot more coming together in the junior races, Stefan. There's a little bit less experience. They don't see the, the incidents coming before they happen. They tend to respond after the incident rather than you know, pre-prepare. And you can see a little bit of chaos as that happens. And they sort themselves out again. And the strong boats will always make their way back to the front. Looks like uh, Gregory and Harding actually suffered a little bit in that. They, they're... Uh, off to the right there, and they were on the left-hand side of the group. Now it's Den Denmark in, in top. Denmark, who uh, have made quite quite a good championship uh, so far. Well, and the most impressive part of that was yesterday afternoon in the senior men's race. Yeah. It was incredible. I mean, a 19-year-old coming into a race of, full of guys with that experience and to come fourth. But he, even the fourth is, is a little unflattering for him, really, isn't it? He, it he is. could have come second. It, yeah, it yeah. wasn't far off it. Yeah. But the, the more experienced ones appreciated him a lot as well. Matt Pedersen, uh, the great guy, 19-year-old, 19 his first race in, in the senior category, and he went right on to the top and, and uh, was fourth. Uh, I think it was yesterday. his birthday also. It was? I okay, think so, that's yeah. why then. Yeah. <laughs> the gods of the mountains here were, were with him. Uh, so De Denmark is also there. Uh, <coughs> Denmark, uh, Emil Kramer and uh, Rasmus Madsen uh, is uh, ra doing a good race so far in this uh, K2 Men Junior race. Six laps. So obviously you can see from your screen another horrible morning here in Bohem. 
Uh, I mean, it's terrible hard work having to sit here and look at this all day, to be fair. Count yourselves lucky that you're at home where it might be cold, raining, perhaps. Here, but, uh, yeah, and here is rather the opposite. It's wonderful, really, really nice uh, location, the Bushin, uh, Bushin Valley. Uh, it's totally flat water, no wind at all. Around, uh, it's already. I think it will be very hot today. It's already around 30, and the, <coughs> the heat will increase uh, throughout uh, the day. And now approaching the first uh, turn, 1,750 meters from. Uh, from the start line. It's still a very big group and the Danes uh, are in the lead. There's a lot of action in that group. You've got Gregory and Harding coming over from the right. You can see the white hat of Luke Harding there. You've just seen the Italians go way out to the left, out of shot now. There's people spread out all over the place and a lot of action behind the group. And we will guide you uh, on the color of the uh, track suits as well uh, soon. But now it's uh, C2 men. C C2 men junior, they are doing five laps. Uh, it's eight boats. It's uh, usually so that uh, it's a little bit uh, less number in the Canadian uh, category, uh, but uh, not less quality. It's interesting though, although there's, there's less numbers, we had the C1 race yesterday and we got the C2 today and only one guy in this race today paddled yesterday. So th there's a few paddlers out there. There's, with the doubling up, you lose a few in the second race, but it's uh, still quite impressive. Although he was the Polish guy, he was a good few minutes behind yesterday, so maybe they haven't got a lot of guys to choose from. It has really developed uh, over the years, and the International Canoe Federation put a lot of effort also to de develop uh, Cana the Canadian category. Uh, <coughs> most focused on uh, women, but uh, also for men. So more and more nations are doing it, uh, and Canadian is of course also an Olympic sport. So now in the lead there is uh, uh, Hungary. Uh, it is uh, Martin Siga and uh, uh, Shaba Shavai. Uh, Hungary that has done also done a wonderful and great uh, championship here. As as they always do. I uh, mean, they're yeah. they're always there. They're always at the top end of things. A oh, beautiful shot of the K2s coming across the top there. Things seem to so it looks like Spain leading. I'll try and get a number on those as they come around the boys. Germany to their their right, Hungary to their left, uh, and Spain again tucked in the diamond. On the far right in the red boat, could be Denmark. Yeah, it is. It is Denmark. So 320, that's uh, Unai Gareca and... Emmanuel Baritumbena from Spain. They could have shorter names, couldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Make it easy, easier for us. And the Germans take over the lead. Gregory oh. and Harding have organised themselves now. They're back to safety. That's good to see from an English point of view. There you got them. A uh, very short uh, clip from uh, uh, the timing system. Uh, just working their way back through the group there on the timing system but Norway is all, also up there see the Spanish names are so long they have to reduce the size of the font for getting them on the screen yeah. there, <laughs> Stefan that's, that's hardly fair to a commentator so pretty much a front group of about 8, eight K2s there I think and uh, the other's not far behind Purely eight. based on the fact they haven't gone that far yet, but uh, eight uh, eight uh, boats in the first in the top group, but uh, all of them is within uh, 20 25 seconds or so still. It will be a very interesting race, I think. Uh, all of them staying so close together, and the uh, junior racing is uh, sometimes really interesting to watch, just because uh, of what you said. They are quite unexperienced. A lot of unexpected things uh, happens. <coughs> So it looks like look that looks less than eight now already, doesn't it? Exactly. That Something happened around the turning boy up there. I can't see in that shot. Ah, there is the first group. It was oh, yeah, the second group. Yeah. So you have Germany from Hungary, from Great Britain, Spain in the V-wash at the back in the diamond. This is a perfect uh, view also to talk a little bit of <coughs> the of the color of their their clothing. Uh, Germany. Uh, is uh, white and uh, black and red stripes on it. 
Great Britain is white and blue and the red stripes across. Uh, Hungary, easy to recognize, uh, green. On the only nation that is using green in this race, I think. Denmark is entirely white, as Norway. Italians in blue there, helpfully yes. in a blue boat also. That makes our lives a little bit easier. Blue and uh, with a, a black stripe on the side of, of the shirt. So here you've got a classic formation. You've got the Germans leading. Great Britain and Hungary have got a little bit of advantage being riding their wash. Spain tucked in behind. They've got a wash from the three boats in front of them. Their life's very easy at the moment. The Italians outside the Great Britain boat. Second wash out. Now that's not quite as good as the, the wash that the Great Britain team are on. But it's better than nothing. And in the K2s it's not quite as difficult as in the K1 there. The two boats out the back. The yellow and the red. They're picking up the scraps that are left over. They're not comfortable there. They would rather be moving up to somewhere else. But at the speed we're going that's not an emergency for them. So that looks like in the yellow boat at the back could be the second Spanish crew? I think so. And in the red at the back is Denmark again. Yeah, yeah. Denmark is uh, using both white and uh, red uh, on their shirts. And Spain, we didn't comment on that, Spain is uh, yellow and uh, red. Also quite easy to recognize. And uh, Spain is also one of the great marathon uh, nations, so they used to be in top, in front. Mm -hmm. Looks like the second group's making a concerted effort to close them down. Yeah. Led by the uh -huh. Germans, so it's Germans leading both groups. So now we have uh, intermediate results also from uh, the second turn. The second turn is about 700 meters from the first turn. It's a slight turn uh, before they approach uh, the five minutes paddling into the portage where we also have a, a timing station. We'll see how many hours this will work. We have had uh, some problems, so to speak, uh, with the internet here, internet and GSM. This is a remote place uh, in the outbacks of Slovenia. It's very, very beautiful, but it's quite hard to get the modern te technology to work here. It's a shame we just lost the picture of the K2s as something was kicking off. The second group are caught up. They have to jockey for position. They have to find security in the front group. And to do that, things need to be rearranged. We just, just missed a little there and we moved back to the C2. The front of the C2, it looks like it's down to Spain and Hungary, which, uh, how many times have we seen that this weekend? <laughs> so they. <laughs> It's Spain and Hungary uh, very often, especially in, uh, in Canadian racing. I think Spain is a little bit, little bit disappointed of uh, these championships, actually. Uh, last year they had a lot of uh, um, medals. They have had a lot of medals also this time, but not so many victories. It's difficult. Yeah, to c initially medals are what counts and you, yeah. and you know, country counts medals but when you get to the level of Spain and Hungary it's not medals anymore is it it's gold, it's gold. medals yeah exactly and yeah you know, if you if you get on the team bus to go home having only won a bronze medal and it doesn't feel so great anymore does it where for some teams to get a bronze medal the whole the whole team would be boosted yes. by that and it's tough being part of those teams so there's the graphic the Hungarian Hungarians rather Siga and Savai and the Spanish with uh, Garida way too many Moya. names. Garida Moya, I think. And then uh, Poland. Poland is also a, a big nation in Canadian paddling. And then France. And uh, Pierre Chaz there was the one athlete in this race who actually raced yesterday in the uh, C1. Mm. But he, I think he was about 15 minutes behind in the end. So yeah. maybe he was concentrating on this more than uh, his C1 yesterday. Then we got up uh, Pedersen and Winter at 401. I don't think that's uh, entirely right. <laughs> Something is wrong there because these guys are uh, uh, Danish and they used to paddle uh, K2. We'll figure out how that is. 401. That is the wrong, the wrong name to to that number. And it's also, uh, I think, a Polish flag there. So something is wrong there in the race admin. But I'm sure if Pedersen gets a medal in this race as well, he won't be disappointed. No, exactly. <laughs> so here we are. Um, actually, I'm not sure exactly if this is the front of the first group. The S Spaniards. It is. 3.20. Yes, it, it is. is. And they're coming round the boys in front of us. No portage on this lap. So straight round and back up to the top turn. Very well done there. 
of these juniors. We used to see a lot more squeezing and crashing in the junior category, but these guys just went around the turn smoothly. There is a little bit. There's just a small break between the first four and the next three. But there's quality paddlers in that next three. Magnus Gregory won the K1 very, very convincingly yesterday. And uh, they're just regrouping, just making contact. Just a bit of overlap with the two groups now. And then it's just finding somewhere you can rest for a short while before hopefully pushing yourself into one of the control positions. See them there making a bit of concerted effort to get onto one of the diamond washers. And I think successful, yes. And there you go. Drop your hands, drop your shoulders and relax for as long as you can. Good work from the Great Britain crew there. You may sense my slight bias when I'm commentating towards the Great British crew, but that's because there's only two of us with microphones, one Swedish, and I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, there is a Swedish K2 in here. Isn't it, it is. It is. So Hungary leading. No, not in this race. It's no Swedish. Oh, well, there you go. Crew, so I'll, I'll stick with my Great Britain yeah. bias then and, yeah, not, sure. and not feel bad about it. So Hungary leading, they always have good K2s. I mean, one of the best K2s for me um, of all time was the Hungarian crew racing back in 98, 99, 2000, Jambor and Zakali. Yeah. They were so tidy and so neat around the portages. The boat ran well and they just looked, it looked effortless. And that, that to me is one of the best K2s there ever was. And uh, they've got a tradition obviously of kayaking anyway. Huge numbers of people in Hungary kayak. It's a very popular sport. And uh, they have the coaching expertise to make these crew boats work. And in the top group here, <coughs> Uh, in the turn was um, uh, Spain with uh, Imanol Bar Bar Barberetta and uh, Unai Greca, um, boat number three, 320. We had 319 with um, uh, Germany, the second German boat, um, Sven Pofler and um, uh, Florian Schubert. Pofler, that is, has three guys here, that uh, family <coughs> racing this weekend. And uh, on the fourth, third position was uh, Hungary again with Kevin Fasekas and uh, Eric Petro. Eric Petro, that uh, <coughs> uh, was uh, sixth in the K1 men junior uh, yesterday. So they, uh, he's doing as many of them uh, his second race here today. Fourth position was um, uh, Spain again with uh, Diego Martinez and Jonathan Garcia. And I think the British guys were there as well. In the yeah, they just they just made their way in from just dangling off at the, f at the first turn there. Which and, uh, which uh, boat was that? What is uh, uh, that's Gregory and Harding yeah, in Greg the yellow boat. Okay. Uh, I'm still trying to find out their boat 314, Ziggy Chamil and James Russell. They, sh they would hopefully also be up in that group at some stage. But I haven't managed to locate them on the course yet. As soon as I do, I will be giving them a shout. The C2 race continues. It looks like the second Hungarian crew have made the jump and caught up, closed that gap. So now we have two Hungarians, one Spanish and the Polish, I think. We oft often see that in uh, C2 racing. It's shifting quite a lot uh, throughout the course. Um, these guys uh, seem quite experienced because they are wash hanging. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to wash hang in the Canadian category because they are steering only with their paddles and it takes a lot of coordination to uh, be able to do that in, in a, an appropriate way. Um, and often, uh, most often it is the second guy in the uh, Canadian the C2 that is um, doing most of the steering, not the front guy actually. I think sometimes when they're on the washes like that and they have to do extreme steering, you do see the front guy leaning out and adjusting yes. the way he paddles just to really force the boat round instead of just coaxing it round. But uh, the Hungarians made that jump and in the process have left the poles to take the lonely journey home at the moment. Just dangling off that front group, you can see them there. Gap of about five seconds that wasn't there half a minute ago. So uh, Poles will seem to be the one primarily who was struggling with the steering more. 
Excellent Hungarians. camera views of the C2s now. It's beautiful to watch uh, C2, how the bodies work. C2, I much prefer looking at to C1. It, it, yeah. The symmetry comes in again, yes. and I think, I think a bit of symmetry and the, the nice slow action really, isn't it, compared to the kayaking? It's nice uh, flowing action. It's very physical, and the the ability to see the full body working, the technique, how they use the hips and the knees, the legs. See well, the difficulty in steering around the corners, guys having to stop actually making the boat go forward as their priority and actually make it getting around the turn as the priority there. So the views this morning from the cameras are great. Really great. Yesterday when the uh, heat, w heat was on, it was quite foggy here on the lake, but uh, this morning it's uh, crystal clear and really nice. So that's 4.07 there, just struggling, getting a little bit hassled on the turn. That's Nagmi Harley and Kosnovoski. But back to the K2s, the speed high again as we join in at Spain. 3.16 Martinez and Garcia. Pushing the pace there, but the back of the group, people still looking really generally relaxed. It's not too stressful. Italian's still there, Dane's still there in the red boat. They're pushing on now, it's their turn to lead. Hopefully, that will allow Great Britain up into the V wash behind them. But the Hungarians are coming around the Spanish and they will cut the Great Britain team out, who will then have to in turn come around the Italians, which we're seeing now. They will squeeze the Italians in and it will have to be the Spanish who back off. And so the cycle goes on. Someone's not happy with the cycle continuing like that and the guys on the left hand side have started their flurry. This flurry will end and there'll be a whole sort of silent discussion about who's going to lead next. Yeah. Spain, Hungary, Denmark, Italy, Great Britain, all in the top group there. Yeah, Spain, Germany and Norway just just a couple of seconds off. That might just be where they went round the timing. They might still be in contact with that group. It's it's hard to tell from here. But uh, looks like good racing in the juniors again today. Absolutely. And it's uh, Jonathan uh, Dagnes Hansen, who finished fourth in the junior category in the Danish boat together with <coughs> Søren Maretti. He's also one of their best sprinters in the Danish team as well, and he, he's also chosen to come here. He values this as part of his preparation for all the competitions he's doing. Which one? Um, Dagnes Hansen. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know that our guys and their coaches were talking to them yesterday. Obviously, they all finished together, so they're all having a chat afterwards. And yeah, he's one of their top sprinters. And he's here today, and doing it's, uh, two it, marathons in two days, and doesn't see a problem with that. No, not at all. And it's the same with Mats Pedersen, and the same with the Danish uh, girls that won the uh, K2 yesterday. Uh, top sprinters, uh, the girl finished uh, fourth in the, the Junior Worlds on 500 meters, I think, uh, last year, and also part of the Danish effort for, for the Olymp for Olympic medals uh, on the short distances. But um, it's no difference for them. They are paddling also marathon, and I think that's quite wise. Uh, many nations um, more or less focusing uh, young athletes uh, on the Olympic distance uh, very early. And I don't think that is beneficial uh, neither for the sport nor for, for uh, the athletes. For some maybe, but uh, the, this kind of race, this kind of racing, is uh, really challenging, and it creates uh, good shape. Okay, the K2 has got strung out there. Someone missed a boy. They're having to back paddle and go round. It looks like the Danes and the Hungarians. Why that happened, you don't know, but the probability is that somebody just tapped the back of their boat while they were going round. Yeah, stops you getting round. You you can't steer against that. Now for Gregory and uh, Harding, they were at the back of the group behind that incident. Now to be at the back of a group that's strung out like that is not a great idea at this stage. And that's Jamil and uh, Russell there. Now they've got a real bonus. This is a free ticket back to the front group. If those Danes were they're strong enough to be in the front group, they're going to try and pull back. Jamil and uh, 
Russell, they are absolutely that's a gift for them. I mean, absolutely, that's a ride back. If if you weren't, they weren't going to get there themselves. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been back that far. Now they're in with a, ch a chance again. So Spain. good news for them is bad news for someone else. Yeah, Spain, Spain, and then you have your. Uh, then we have uh, the Nor Norway. Eva Shannonvold up there in third position. Uh, they both raced uh, K1 yesterday. Uh, so it's their second marathon in two days in these hot conditions. And Spain weren't that impressive yesterday in the oh. K1, were they? It really came down to Denmark and Great Britain. Yes. Although the, the Spanish, they're, they're both up there. They're both yeah. sort of top 10, I think, yeah. yesterday. But, but didn't Mag appear impressive in the races themselves. Exactly. And uh, Magnus Iversen finished uh, fifth uh, yesterday, uh, just a couple of seconds uh, behind uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Dagnes Hansen from Denmark. Magnus Iversen, who has a father that is uh, Morten Iversen, that was a world champ back in 87 in K4 10,000, I think it was. And I think he had another medal in K1 uh, 1,000 meter. Uh, as well back in the days and his mother is an Olympic champion from Sweden actually Anna Olsson so it's a great heritage in canoeing uh, for him it was interesting that the, the Hungarians who got hassled at the last turn made a fantastic effort to catch up Spanish totally kept an eye on that the whole time and the moment the Hungarians were just about to settle off they went it hasn't worked for them Hungarians have settled back into the group well but the Spanish had a great perception of what was happening there it's great racing. Yeah, it really is. Great Britain safe at last on the outside of that leading Spanish crew. The so two Spaniards, one Hungarian, German, Great Britain, and on the far side, I can't quite work out who they are. White vests, it's Norwegians. I think so. It must be Norway. Yes. It's a lot better ta tactics uh, today in the uni this junior uh, race than yesterday. Maybe they watched uh, uh, K1 men yeah, and heard your, your commentary there <laughs> <laughs> and learned. Back to some moody photography from the top turn there. Spanish still from the Hungarians. Looks like the second Hungarians never really uh, got back in touch after they were balked on the previous turn. Just in our eye shot now, opposite us, not on your screen. The juniors are just heading to the turn before the first portage. Be quite crucial for them to get safely through the first portage. We saw so many people yesterday arrive in the front group on that first portage and leave in the second. So it's all kicking off over there just before the first, the uh, turn before the portage. Hopefully we we'll get a view of that fairly shortly. And uh, just a quick screen graphic of confirmation of the C2 race. Excitement starting to pick up in the spectator area as they see the K2s heading towards them about a minute to go. Now here we go. So it's Gregory. It will be a very challenging first portage. And Harding. Uh, coming in many K2s in, uh, to uh, the ponton. The ponton is uh, wide enough to carry at least two K2s on each side, uh, but there are many more there. So this will be very challenging and interesting and maybe decisive for, for some of them. Now it's uh, just time to, for them to calm down, uh, take it easy and make this safe. It, lo it looks odd that the Spanish have come out that wide from where the others are, but due to the angle of the pontoon, that's the best approach angle for them. So it's, it does make sense if you're here. It might not make sense on your TV screen. Hungarians kind of stranded in the middle of those. They've done a lot of work to close the gap from the, from the previous collision, and they look to be the ones who are struggling. They've chosen the side with the least, least people on it. So in we come. Gregory Harding, first out, front of the boat up first. Oh. A little bit of aggro, a little bit of slipping over, but I think everyone survived. And through they come. Spanish with the quickest out of the boat. And just coming into the portage now, you've got Ziggy Chamil, James Russell, along with Can Danish, we have the graphics up Danish now crew. as well? It would be lovely to have the graphics now to see who, who is who there. So in go the Spanish.
There it is. I think that's Martinez. No, it's Gareca and Bartu Abania. Followed by Gregory Harding, then the other Spanish, Martinez and Garcia. And, and out from the porches is Spain. Spain made a great port porches there and they are flying. They created a gap for, for themselves. And there's, there's Hassel and that looks like disaster for Gregory and Harding. That's a rudder problem right there, possibly from where they got out of the portage. Yes. That's, that is a total lack of steering. They are going to be very disappointed. You can shout all you like for a new rudder, but the race is over. It's not. Yes. That's, that's we'll so sad for those boys. They've gone through a lot to be here. And uh, see what they do. Such a great day yesterday. And just a big disappointment. The Great Britain team will have everything they need ready because that's how well organized they are. But uh, you can see they're not going to be closing those gaps. So it's the Spaniards who made the best portage. Great Britain actually moved with the second quickest over the portage and that filled the gap that's appeared now. And then there's the, the rest of the field. So those Spaniards up and away. They don't look like they're too rushed, but they're certainly not waiting. Could be Norway it's Nor making the it chase. Is. It is, it's Norway. Hungary, the second Spanish crew, which is Garida. And uh, the Germans. And, this, and Hungary. But that second Spanish crew isn't quite as tidy or as drilled as the first one. The first one looks really... I mean, you can see the difference there, just in the stroke rate, the timing. And Gregory and Harding, they are. They're, they're back up and running. Yeah. They didn't, didn't lose uh, Didn't lose as much, much as we thought. Oh. Maybe it's just a case of the bent rudder and they yeah. just bent it down. Yeah. They had a, an accident uh, when they get get out of the boat uh, in the beginning of the portage uh, where Norway slipped and uh, they were involved there as well and dropped their boat on the pontoon and maybe the rudder got a little bit smashed there. The rudder is uh, constructed <laughs> on a, a kind of metal pole or what you say in proper English and then... A stem, metal stem. Yeah, metal stem. Yeah. And then uh, it easily bent and then uh, uh, it's possible to bend back so again. whose job is it? to look after that in the K2. It, that's really one of your backman's responsibilities. You're, you're there, you're the one, you hold that boat. Now, it's, it's really difficult with a K2. There's, there's crowded K2s there. What, what you can actually do in a K2 is the backman doesn't even need to touch that boat. The front man can get the front of the boat out and even if he's running, the back of the boat will never hit anything because it's dragging in the water. Once it, the boat is clear of the other competitors, then the backman can pick it up. If you pick it up too soon and the other people tread on it, jump on it, whatever, then you're in trouble. It's, it's the main responsibility of the backman yeah. to protect the other and uh, making sure these things doesn't happen. And it's also very important that a uh, back paddler uh, does not lift the boat first before the Absolutely. front one. If he does, just leave well alone. Leave the yes. boat until the front man's got it out. But equally, you know, it's not all the back man's responsibility. If the drivers put you in a difficult, complicated position, then you've only got what the material to work with that you've got. You've got the, the, the poor position in, maybe. You've got the, the other crews around you. Maybe you haven't judged how well you've stopped the boat. There's a lot to work with in the K2s. A lot of communication between the guys. These two guys, the Great Britain guys, they've worked together a lot. I'm sure they're a bit upset with themselves for whatever mistake they made there. But uh, anyway, the race continues. And we've got a lovely long shot of them there, paddling back up to the first turn. Looks like the Spaniards are still on their own out the front. There's still just a group of four there. Norwegians, Germans, Spanish, and Hungarians in that group. Group behind them contains Great Britain, Denmark, Italy, and someone else who I'm struggling to identify. And here we are. I was think I'm, I'm thinking a little bit of the small accident that we saw on the one of the previous turns where. Uh, the one of the boats, I think it was the Danes, that were involved in uh, getting in on the inside of one of the boys. It's 
kind of culture thing to stop there and back back off again because the the rules nowadays is that if it's not your fault if if it's by accident you are squeezed in, into such a boy either by someone touching the back of the kayak and steer it uh, steer it the wrong way or if you're too squeezed uh, by the out the fellow competitors on the outside into the boy it's not your fault to miss the boy then you can continue to paddle and uh, the penalty penalty for it goes to to the guy uh, to the crew causing the 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 accident but um, in the nordic countries especially in the nordic countries uh, that's a different story if if you miss a boy in the nordic in sweden Dan Denmark, Denmark and norway and may uh, some other countries as well if you miss a boy you need to back to back uh, to to back off even if you, if it was uh, accidental so what we saw there was um, them following the tradition the tradition they are used to from home and they haven't uh, been able to catch up with the uh, the regulations of the rules of international marathon racing i think to think that all through clearly yes. in a situation like that is asking a lot of, of anyone let alone it juniors is, absolutely. and you 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 mentioned it's the people who caused the problem but it's like dominoes you don't know where the cause was when you're the guy who's going inside yeah. the boy and especially if you're the back man you don't know that your front man didn't make the mistake exactly so the back man it could be thinking it's your fault it, it's a very difficult situation but yeah he, but we made these rules to make it easier actually, yeah and too. and it's so reasonable you know yeah. the the crime of going inside one boy it's, is not a disqualifiable no offense no. it is so we not but if you if it's clear that you do it uh, on purpose just to gain yeah. some ground then, then it is th then it is yeah but and i mean that was clearly an accident it was the danes and the hungarians who yeah. suffered and and they are you know, the danes more so because the hungarians yeah. at least have caught back up to the yeah. group and it's about fair racing everything we try to make rules that makes the race fair and the uh, before, in previous days, it was only one penalty, and that was disqualification. It's not anymore. If you make a minor uh, fault, you will have a 15-second penalty. And standing here in the portage and waiting for 15 seconds, seeing your fellow competitors run away. That's not uh, a situation not you want to be in. It's not fun. <laughs> okay, just getting into the water there, 406. That's Calvo and Garrido from Spain. And... Opposite them, the Hungarians, 404, a Sega and Savai. They've been leading the C2 race pretty much from halfway around the first lap, and that state continues. Behind them is the other Hungarian boat and the Poles. They also came into the portage together. The Poles now in shot, running through the portage. A little bit of an energy drink thing there. Look like an energy gel for the first guy. Seems a bit unnecessary to have an energy gel after about 20 no. minutes of racing. No. And uh, the, the distance isn't that long either, so... So, 403 from Poland, Piochaz and Ria Bukowski. Off they go. And there we have confirmation, Spain, Hungary, Poland, Hungary, and then Poland again. So they all head up to the top end of the course. Well, next time we see the K2s, we'll see if those Spaniards have managed to maintain their break. Having seen it done two or three times already this weekend, senior women, senior men, maybe that gives you a little bit of extra confidence if you're the boat that's broken away. But a chasing group of four when you're on your own is really quite intimidating. It's just whether that four can arrange themselves and agree to help each other out for a while rather than race each other. There's the C2s paddle away from us. I think we're still having Judging by the messages we're getting, we're still having trouble getting the live stream out there. We can only apologize for that. 
All I can tell you is that Stefan and myself are doing a great job in here, even if you can't hear us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, in fact, some of the bits you can't hear are our best bits, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> but it is great problems um, uh, here uh, with the internet connections. Uh, this remote uh, Valley of Buchin is really, really nice and the perfect paddling conditions and everything such is really nice. It's so tranquil, uh, it's far away, uh, but it doesn't provide enough uh, capability, enough bandwidth for for us to make a good broad broadcast of, out of it. But On the positive uh, side, Stefan, from this side, everything else is in place. Yes. So wh when you do get a venue where the, the Techni technological stuff is in place then everything is going to go out smoothly and things will just get better and better yes. so if you're out there be patient with us and one day it will all come right that day is uh, first uh, the, the last weekend in July <coughs> uh, beginning of August where we will appear in Brandenburg for the World Cup uh, the Marathon World Cup in Brandenburg Germany there we will have uh, internet, uh, good, good internet and everything else in place as well. Everything except me on that one, Stefan. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for that, yes. I'm on holiday that one. Mm. I can't always be working, uh, Stefan. Mm. Everyone needs a break. But uh, I will be back, hopefully, if I'm invited back for the World Championships in Gure in September. Absolutely. And, uh, and that is the 10th of September, I think, 10th to 14th of September in Gure in Hungary. And we expect a big... Uh, good technology uh, that uh, technology setup that will be working perfectly from Hungary. Well not only good technology we'll be expecting crowds measured in their thousands rather than yes. their hundreds Yes. and uh, a whole nation that knows what they're watching yeah. and all the excitement that goes along with that. So uh, here we go K2 front group the Spanish have been caught either they chose not to run thinking they're too far from home or the chasing group organized themselves well enough to close that gap. So Hungary leading, Norway, then Spain, then Spain, and then Germany. Now you've got some motivated boats behind them still. There's the Danes who had dropped off that group in the collision. They're motivated, but they're quite a long way back, but maybe 20 seconds only. 20 seconds looks a lot longer on the water than it does when you've got a visual on it yourself. And then it's another 40 seconds probably back to the next chasing group and at the moment we don't know who's in that uh, third group but for now it's the Hungarians leading looking very well drilled certainly the better of the two Hungarian boats both Spaniards Norway and Germany so as they stand there nicely organized group it's Germany that's getting the rough end of the deal and until they make a change there's no motivation for any of the others to make a change. The only thing that will change this group now is if the Germans decide they don't want to sit second wash or the Hungarians decide that they don't want to lead anymore. But that situation, yes, sorry. And the Iversen and Wald seems to uh, do a very comfortable race. Uh, interesting. Norway another good K2. So this is the turn before the portage another couple hundred meters here and of course that forces change and here we go people, the Spaniards, but Norway responded very yes, very nicely very quick, there, very, very nicely. Nice, yes. And all they're doing is trying to hold the Spaniards off. So they want to keep the Hungarian wash, they don't want the Spaniards coming round and their job is done. So although they sped up, they had no intention of leading, they just had to hold off the, Itali the, oh, sorry, the Spanish challenge and get back on the Hungarian wash. Spanish haven't given it up yet, just starting again now to do the same again, same pattern will repeat. Hungarians have to speed up because they don't need the Norwegians leading. Norwegians, no intention of leading, but... And now it's full, full speed, yes. Up. It's full speed into the portage. They are slowing down a little bit now and they are securing their positions. This is very, very uh, demanding for them. Uh, full speed into, into the portage, uh, the body full of lac lactic acid and uh, then... Um, the breathing comes with that, and then they have to run for 100 and 150 meters to full speed and out again. So it's really, really tough for the athletes uh, at this moment. 
Norway is doing a great uh, portage on so the other front, side there. Watch perfect. them front of the boat out first. Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's the Germans that are really struggling here, although the back Spanish guy can't seem to get out of the boat. So I'm not sure what was wrong with him there. Something clearly wasn't right for that crew. They arrived reasonably early, but couldn't get out before the uh, Germans who arrived last. So Hungary through the portage first, then Norway, then Spain. Back of the boat goes in first, guys. Ah. Uh, Back of the boat goes in first. Yes. We'll, we'll teach them, Stefan. Yeah, I'm sure they'll, need. when they watch this video <laughs> next week, they'll learn. It's Hungary and it's uh, Norway and it's uh, Spain. And then it's a small gap to uh, Germany and the Spain once again. And I'm not sure, you know, Germany and the second Spanish crew are definitely the weaker crews in the group. Absolutely. So depending on how big that gap is, I, I can't see it from here. They're going to struggle to get, well, they're not going to struggle to get back if they stop like that. It's Norway and Hungary and they are, yeah, Hungary slowing down now and that it does also no, the Norwegians. Yeah, it is very demanding for them. Really, really demanding. Full speed into the portage, full speed over the portage. Uh, they are tired. Um, and if they don't have a, a gap um, that a judge is um, uh, possible to use to to make a breakout. See the Spanish dropping they, around the back of the Hungarians yes. there to go into the, the diamond wash, which is the most restful place you can be. Hungarians but felt they'd done enough coming into yes. the portage. They weren't going to. They weren't prepared to do more coming out of there. Um, and uh, Norwegians have taken the lead. Hungarians a little bit naughty there. Look, they've just squeezed the Spanish. They had no reason to go across behind the Norwegians. Yeah, but it was an appropriate but tactic. tactic. They wanted, they wanted uh, the wash behind. I think uh, they maybe decided the Spanish are their strongest yeah. opposition, and they're not going to help them out. Exactly. And that's exactly. It's a harsh thing to do, but it's probably the yeah. right thing to do. Yes. You can see there the Danish crew that were hassled earlier on. They're in that chasing group of four, and that that group's definitely closing now, yes, isn't it? Yes. Yes. In fact, they're right on them. It's even with the camera angle shortening the distances, those crews are right back up there now. They're that coming was... wide, and when they run back in down the washes, that will become a group of eight. Very well done of the Danes that had the trouble around the turning boy uh, previously. So the Marit and uh, Jonathan Dagnes Hansen. So what actually happened there was the Spanish who struggled to get out of the portage have, have actually been caught first, and they're the ones doing the work to close that gap. Mm. So another fortunate break for the crews in the group behind. You've got a very strong Spanish crew there who are prepared to work. I think the front group's seen them now as well. And they're sort of having a discussion as to who's going to stop that happening. But I think it might be too late to stop it happening. They still haven't moved across though, so maybe they're not as close as, uh, as we thought. Here they go now. Crossing over, they've all split up a little. Maybe just one crew. No, they've, they've backed off again and gone out to their the safety of their own group of four. So we appreciate all our viewers being here today. We'll give it our best shot, keeping you informed. We know you had the choice of Wimbledon, the British Grand Prix, and Women's World Cup football, but you've made the right decision. And you're here with us in Boheen at the European Marathon Canoe Championships. We appreciate your loyalty. But I have to say this, this event is well worth watching. Seems to be quite a lot of excitement in the spectator area behind us. But I think we can just put that down to the mild insanity of the local commentator. I'm not sure I'm not sure we're missing anything or you're missing anything, even if you can hear quite a lot of excitement going on there. So yep, it looks like that group's reformed as a group of eight. 
Good news for me as a Great Britain fan. Our crew of Jamil and Russell made that made that group along with the Spanish, who seem to be the workhorses that close the gap. So thanks to the Spanish poor portaging, there have been three beneficiaries of that. So now we've got a front group of eight and somewhere maybe about a minute behind them is the second group that's still contained. Here we go. Who have we got in that group? Very hard to tell. I think that's Portuguese. But other than that, there's Italians there with the red, white and green. But uh, no, it's too difficult for me to identify them at this stage. So a little bit of downtime and as they disappear up the course. We can just in the distance from here see the C2s coming in. But they are about five minutes away from the portage. Get head on shot, silhouetted group of eight. And we can also see the wonderful surroundings here. Uh, we are on the lake is uh, about 500 meters above sea level. And uh, the peaks around here is up to over 2000 meters. We were up on one of them yesterday evening and it was just wonderful. It's great up there, it's great summer and it's uh, uh, trails for hiking with huts in a couple of hours uh, in between each other. So it's a great area for hiking. And the mountain guides up there said, yeah, yeah, July and August is too crowded. It's thousands of people here. It's much better in September <laughs> than we are al alone again. <coughs> You can't ever see it being crowded here. The population of two million and all this space. Yes. You'd be lucky to see someone in a day's walking here. Yeah. It's like the northern yeah. part of Sweden, actually. More elks and beers than people up there. And the golden monster I was talking about is actually the golden horn. And it is like a, a deer with golden horns. So it wasn't a monster after all. So, okay. So don't be too concerned if you are out walking. There are no monsters. It's just... A, a type of deer with gold horns. I think it's still mythological. I don't think it's real, but you never can tell. The myths have to start somewhere. So, Junior Boy's just gone around the turn. Everyone in there. Somebody's just dangled off that group a little bit, but uh, it's all looking well organised. I think they're down to seven. I think there's an eighth boat just trailing behind. And uh, Denmark is there once again with Jonathan. Um, Jonathan Dagnes it's the, Hansen. It's the Italians that have just dropped off. Yes. They're looking a bit a bit tired there. But uh, the real beneficiaries of the poor Spanish port portaging were Great Britain and Denmark. And the Danish crew is uh, Jonathan uh, Dagnes Hansen that finished uh, four, fourth um, yesterday. And Søren Moretti, they are both from Silkeborg uh, Kayak Club, one of the f found, founding fathers of marathon uh, canoeing, actually. Um, Silkeborg, uh, that have organized uh, Tour de Gudino even since the beginning of the 70s. Tour de Gudino, that beginning is of what, time. Yeah, beginning of time. Um, and. Um, uh, Silkeborg uh, Tour de Gune is one of the great races, two-day races, so 120 kilometers or so, uh, really challenging. And uh, Silkeborg has, even since then it started, uh, had, have had uh, very good marathon paddlers, a good tradition there. Uh, th th this tradition is followed now by Jonathan uh, Dagnes Hansen and Søren Moretti. Okay, their uh, trainer, Finn Pape, uh, will be very, very pleased with the results here today. He is also the trainer for, for the girls, that uh, the Danish girls that won the race yesterday. And Katrin Rask, who won uh, K1 Women Junior uh, on Friday. The Hungarians are still attempting to squirt the drinks into their athletes as they run past. Yeah. Uh, 
Maybe it's a training exercise for the supporters to see how well they can squirt liquid into people. I don't think this is... Uh, they, they don't regard uh, these 17.5 uh, kilometers uh, as uh, long enough to have appropriate drinks. It's just another training session for them. Or 19, 9, 19 kilometers. They are doing 19 kilometers, these guys. So it was the Spanish who looked slightly stronger coming into that portage. You saw the whole thing. Um, Hungarians came out well, maybe inspired by having their faces squirted with energy drink. Mm. Put, uh, put Polish in shot there, followed again by Hungarians. It's Ria Bukowski in the front of that boat and in the back, Pia Chaz who raced yesterday. Nicely out, front guy's gone, and there's, you see there, not bad at all. No rush for that back guy to get hold of the boat. In come the Hungarians, but we're going to watch the Polish run through the portage. <laughs> it's quite fun actually watching that. But that, again, we need, we need the sort of Benny Hill type music for that. <laughs> So they're going to get back in their boat. And off they go. So maybe that's one upgrade we could get for you for the World Championships. If we could have a little uh, music box where we can play jingles as they, uh, <laughs> if we see any errors or what, something worth uh, putting a Benny Hill soundtrack over, it would be uh, entertaining. So that's the C2, currently lying in third. It's not the first time the Polish have held third place with a nice tidy gap this weekend, but last time it ended in tears in the women's K2 yesterday. Yeah. Just as we said, that they had uh, 40 seconds and they ensured their bronze medal. They fall in uh, in their final portage. And what lost was interesting the with that, they fell in, they gave up because the Belgians we're going to yeah. get the bronze medal. At the other end of the portage, the Belgians fall in, and it was the Hungarians who were in fifth and sixth mm. place who come up to get the medals. That's why you should so. never, never uh, give up in marathon canoeing. So many things can happen, and you never know. So as we watch the C2s paddle away from us, We await the K2s. We can just see them from the commentary tent. Still looks like that full group. It looks like the Italians may well have caught up again because there's no there's no single straggler behind that group now. So the Italians have made contact with the group again. And it seems to be moving fairly slowly. But with the portage coming up, the boys will need a reshuffle. And uh, we'll try and talk you through that as it happens. Maybe we can have a camera shot on them now, on the other side of the lake here, right from here, of the K2. There we go. Man. It's like your magic, Stefan. Yeah. You, you have magic powers that can the direct cameras with your voice. Production remotely. advisor <laughs> is uh, Brian Chapman, who knows canoe marathon uh, for a long time, knows canoeing for a long time, and he's helping the uh, television producer to uh, pick the right views for the four cameras around the, around the course. So up come the Norwegians. They don't want to be stuck on the outside for the turn. The Spanish will try and hold them off. Hungarians, we know, enjoy leading all the way into the portage. They seem to have the power and the speed to do that. And they are, they are doing very well Beautifully together smooth, in, yeah. isn't it? That is beautifully smooth. Yeah. So, so you kind of make an assumption, maybe. You might be wrong, but I'm going to assume the Hungarians are going to lead all the way into the portage. There'll be a couple of attacks on the outside to try and get to their sidewash, which the people who are currently on their sidewash will have to defend. Well, what will be the appropriate tactics from for the Norwegians out there on the left-hand side now? Norwegians, they should have one one chance to overtake the Spanish. And if the Spanish say no, then you have to learn from that and do exactly what they've done there and drop in behind them. So, very good. I mean, it's a bit chaotic in the shot now, but I have to... We, 
we can't really see from the shots what's happening in front of us. You can see one of the crews could be the Norwegians. I've had to yeah, it is. To to be out there when they were currently coming into the group, somebody must have tapped the back of their boat and affected their steering. Yes, the, it was the Italy that uh, was touching the back of back of uh, the Norwegian boat, and they went out a bit, but uh, managed that quite well. They seem very strong, Hungary and. Uh, Nor uh, Norway and the Spanish crew are coming through on the Germans now they need yeah. to arrive before the Great Britain who are on their outside so the four strong boats here really got Norway Hungary Spain and Great Britain they're the ones who dealt with all the incident there the best and it's the ones who deal with the incidents comfortably that are the strong crew so it's Spain on this side Hungary on the other side Norway on the other side and Great Britain in shot now a little bit slow at the boat and don't pick the back up first the Spanish again, fairly slow at the boat. Maybe, the, maybe there's something wrong with one of the guys there, but certainly nothing wrong with these two. They run well. Oh, C2 in the way. They oh no, that C2 needs to be gone. So Spanish in C2, just in time. The Hungarians away, Spanish away, Great Britain away. Norway. Norway just putting the boat in a little bit too late, really. They're going to have a couple of lengths to make up. But Spain off again. Second time they've let out of a portage and second time they've let out the portage very comfortably. Hungary, Great Britain now. Norway, uh, as we saw on the graphics, uh, Norway was... Uh, Within the top three in the <coughs> beginning of the portage, and um, yeah, they are they are back again. But uh, they lost some ground there, uh, getting some drinks into so the Vold portage. So it's Vold and Great Britain waiting in the in the back behind the Spanish. There, Norwegians have to go all the way to the to the Spanish, and when they get there, who gets the most benefit from that? Great Britain. Yeah. So good work from Ziggy Chamil there. Thought that through, probably from the wisdom of his coach, who was one of the best 10k paddlers we had. Norman Mason is coaching not only Ziggy but a whole multi-discipline group up at Nottingham Canoe Club under the banner of Norm Plan. And a bit of a change there. Hungarians <laughs> decided to bully the British yeah. there. Yeah. Hungarians make probably making a point. I don't know. And now uh, Norway realised the situation and uh, go to the other go side. Go to the far to, side. To Great, get, uh, Great Britain now need to stop. They need to stop and move up with the Norwegians and get back in the diamond yeah. wash. So I think he's been a little bit slow to do that, but maybe he can see that the Norwegians aren't closing as fast as... I'm hoping he can see something I can't, because I don't like him sitting where he's sitting. You can see what Norway is doing now. They are pulling hard now to get get onto onto the wash there, and now Great Britain realised that. Now they have gone back. Now, ideally, he should have done that much, much sooner. Yeah. Then he can use the Norwegian effort to catch up yeah. instead of his own. So and perfectly managed both of from Norway and Great Britain. Now it's done. Norway uh, with uh, Magnus Ivarsson and um, uh, from uh, the, they are both uh, from uh, Fana Kayak Club in Bergen, Norway, um, and their coach is uh, Morten Ivarsson and Anna Olsson. Both of them um, have medals medals in the uh, world. Uh, and in World Championships and uh, Olympic Championships. Uh, a lot of canoeing going on in that uh, family and not only for their son, Magnus Iversen, but also for the other athletes up there in Bergen. So it looks like the Germans are making a fairly concerted effort to close that gap. It's a fairly big gap to close and when they get there, what have they got? There's not a lot of, there's no spare space in that group. They're going to have to pick up... But do the Norwegians look like they're having trouble steering, Stefan? They're all over the place. They're wandering out, they're wandering in. Maybe. Could be. They um, Both uh, the previous portages, they have had some trouble getting out. And I saw the boat was dragged up on the, okay. uh, on the pontoon. There could be something there. They did well, but it was uh, very close close call to uh, to the pontoon. So whether that group will reform, Germans were attempting to close the gap, Italians back there with them or just behind. We've seen them close the gap before and off the back of that group, Denmark in the red boat, they've had a 
tough old race really they've had a lot of catching up to do and the second spanish crew also there so so good strong nations but it looks like the germans have closed the gap the other three italy denmark and spain still floundering a bit at the back and uh front group of five followed by a group of three so currently norway leading spain in the diamond wash hungary to the right great britain to the left and germany they're going to have to force their way into those comfortable positions or just accept that they're going to have to work slightly harder than the others to Den cover the Denmark distance. Denmark is moving now yeah, into the group, as it seems. Denmark that... Um, it's really hard with the camera angles there. I think, yeah, there's, still, I think there's still a gap between it those still a gap. back three. Yeah. yeah, I think that maybe that camera... Mm, it's still hard to tell. Denmark is certainly trying something. They've moved away from the other two in their group. And maybe they are attempting a solo closure of that gap that had opened up. I think up. they are eager to get a good wash to rest somewhat yeah. uh, after the effort they were forced to do to close the gap when they had the accident uh, at one of the first laps on one of the turning boys. A nice head-on shot there. Again, it shortens the distances. It's so hard to tell from these camera shots whether that's a group of five followed by a group of three or whether it's the full group of eight all together again. So, Stefan's just left the commentary box temporarily because, as ever, between the two of us, we failed to keep track of, the, track of the number of laps. We just get too excited about the actual action itself. But it, it looks like that whole K2 group's reformed. So back to a seven-boat group. Norway. Hungary. Great Britain. And Spain making up the front four. And then on the outside, you've got Germany, Italy, and somewhere in the back there should be Denmark. So Hungary in green, Spain in the yellow and white, Italy in blue, Germany, white with the red stripes. And have we got Denmark there? Maybe not. They're still on the graphic in eighth there, but not in the group itself. So the boys make their way. They've come around the top turn and they're going to be heading back towards us fairly shortly. So Iverson Vold from Jamil Russell, Petro Fizikas, Palfla and Schubert. And then Spanish. Didn't have time to catch their names there. And currently, the Italians bringing up the rear of that group, as they have been for quite a long time. And at the front, it seems like the Norwegians are fairly keen to keep that lead. There's the Danes in picture now. They were the ones who suffered. And the Hungarians are going. They've taken the Norwegians on. A little bit of posturing, a little bit of uh, chest beating there, but it's the Norwegians that came off best. They're still leading. Hungarians just been given a bit of a slap down and normal service will resume back to normal cruising speeds. Onto the C2s. They're just coming into the turn before the portage. Last time coming in it looked to be the Spanish who were stronger the Hungarians ran through the portage well and got in first so 
really nothing too critical at this stage. So six laps in total. Hopefully you the spectators have been keeping track better than I have. But we'll update you. I think they've done three portages already. This will be their fourth. As they come round the third of the five boys in this that make up this turn. Water so flat you can see the reflection of the paddlers now in the water. It really is quite phenomenal here. So they've rounded the turn, it's straight into the portage now. Spain choosing the right hand side of the pontoon. Hungary pretty much having to settle for, for the left side. There's no real benefit in either side and whatever benefit you gain at this end, the opposite side has the advantage at the getting in end. So nothing really to choose. They probably just have a favorite side they get out. An awful lot of people who belong to a canoe club you find can only get in or out of their boat on the one side because that's how they do it from the time they learn. And uh, hopefully these guys have moved on since that stage, but uh, you still have a favored side. I like to get out of the left side of my boat pick up the boat with my right hand. It's, it just works better for me. So Spaniards coming in, looking the stronger of the two crews just as they did on the previous lap. I'm looking forward to uh, the Hungarian support crew show, which we'll be treated to. Oh, no rush on the Spanish part there. Let go of his paddle, he put his paddle on the floor. Just no need for that could hold it and it would save you a little bit of hassle. So through come the Spaniards, usually well organized, they've got drinks around their neck already. Second guy's going to get his next drink, job done. Meanwhile the Hungarians are trying to squirt their paddlers with a bit of orange juice from a bottle. And this time it will be the Spanish that get in first. Be interesting to see if they do feel as strong as they look. Maybe they'll make a bit of a break here, but no real rush and off they go. Should give them about five or six lengths. Whether that gap can be closed or not depends exactly on how these Hungarians feel. So this race will pan out and just in view for us in the commentary that's a decent sized gap there five or six lengths. Hungarians are going to have to work hard to close that. About a minute away from the portage at this end is the Polish crew and they're now being hunted down by their compatriots and Hungarians working together. Here we are, they're all three of those in shot there. So it's Poland from Hungary from Poland. So Stefan's rejoined me in the commentary box and hopefully with the information we all need and we have done fifth. Uh, they are the, on their fifth lap, uh, which means uh, two more uh, portages to do. And when they appear here for the next portage, they will do one more full lap, and after that, one sh one portage more and one short lap. So they are on the fifth lap now, out of six full laps. Uh, the K2s and the C2s are in the uh, fourth lap uh, out of five. So Poles running through the portage. Bit of water thrown at them. And the K2s gradually coming round coming into sight now. The Danes still dangling off the back of that group by uh, really a tantalizing sort of five, six seconds maybe. But they've been there since we last saw them and that's it's quite soul destroying really. Maybe they can find one of the washes out the back there, have a nice big wave to ride down. You can get combined waves behind a group that size that are really quite big and comfortable. But uh, really coming into a portage 
Maybe, you know, if the, if the big group have a collision at the portage, the Danes can pick up a few places just by avoiding that. But uh, it's not a position you choose to be in, that dangling off the group like that all by yourself. So it looks to be Norway leading yes. this time. Norway, that um, I just spoke to the uh, Norwegian um, coach, uh, Sletsjö, and uh, he said it, they looked very, very confident. They were smiling over the porches and uh, they didn't even want drinks. They said, you can give one of us drinks uh, next lap and the other one doesn't need this lap. Um, Norway has a great tradition in, in K2 uh, junior racing. Uh, Karl Anders Lettsjö, uh, the son of their main coach, together with the uh, URTL, they won the junior, junior World Championships back in 2011 in Singapore. But today it's uh, Magnus Ivarsen and um, Amund Vold that is um, doing uh, their K2. Amund hey. Vold that is uh, from Strand Kayak Club in Oslo. Uh, with their trainer Tom Selvik. So this time really is those Norwegians who are dominating this run into the portage. Hungarians on their outside, they seem to have had some steering problems with the Spanish who tapped the back of their boat. Spanish are going to try and come around the Hungarians and get on terms with the Norwegians. And out to the left, the Italians have thought the best option is just to move away. So it's the Spanish trying to get on level terms with the Hungarians. Hungarians moving away from the Norwegians and that's purely to hold the Spanish out. Now they're coming to the right-hand side of the portage. Norwegians going left. Great Britain to the left behind the Norwegians. So it's Norway first into the portage. Great Britain behind them. Then Hungary. Very then well Spanish, done. Then Spanish and then the Italians. Very good Norwegians portage. Norwegians absolutely clean away. Hungarians out well. And Spanish again very slow getting out. Italians going well. I'm really not sure what's going on with the Spanish getting out of their boats. It just seems to be taking forever. Watch Norway now, they are really doing well. That really? and a little raise of the paddle there yeah. as well. That's yeah. yeah, those sort of things come back to haunt you sometimes, yeah. don't they? <laughs> there's a there's still a lap and a short lap to go. There's still accidents can happen, and there's yeah, nothing's comfortable at this stage. You so it's Norway away, then Hungary, then Great Britain. Not sure who the fourth person is going to be there behind the graphic, but uh, I think it's going to be Spain. Yep, there's Spain on the side of Great Britain. These four are away now, and maybe this is the time that it's reduced to four paddlers. No, then nobody's rushing away. Norwegians, probably confident in their ability to hold anyone off anyway. So, absolutely. So, so it doesn't really matter to them. Germans, again, working hard to catch up. They've done that so many times. Italians up the right hand side of the group along with the second Spanish crew. But I, I imagine the Norwegians confident enough from the approach to that porches, they don't really mind if there's eight or four or just, it's not no. going to make any difference to them. It seems very confident, yeah. hopefully not overconfident. As you said, he raised his paddle and signaled that uh, everything was fine. Um, could be. But um, it's, a, it's a dangerous thing in a, a K2. I mean, these guys, that they've paddled together before, yes. obviously, but they haven't done that many races before. No. And it's not just communication between the front guy and the back guy as to what you're trying to do at any one moment. It's the communication between how much energy he's using and how much energy you're using. So that back guy might feel like the strongest guy in the world. And the reason for that might be that the front guy is doing so much yeah. work that... And he's, he's thinking, geez, you know, this is a long way around yeah. this race. And the back guy's thinking, nope, I'm all, I'm all up for it. So there's a communication of energy there. And you have to understand how much the other guy's doing. Now, initially, when you start racing K2s, you, you have a verbal communication on that. And, you know, are you OK? Simple questions. Are you OK? The back man always says yes, even when there's <laughs> snot coming out of his nose and steam coming out of his ears. And he's like, yeah, I'm OK, I'm OK. And you look around, you think, you're not OK. You have to tell the truth in those situations. And slowly you learn how the boat feels when both of you are feeling good and when one of you is not feeling so good. And if it gets ever to a stage where the front guy is asking for more power from the back, then that's pretty much a minute before it all goes horribly wrong. Because if, if you haven't got the power you need and you're the front guy, either the back guy's asleep, in which case he needs waking up, or he's already gone. So Denmark there, continuing their lonely trawl behind the group. 
Denmark that ha had an accident in, in the beginning of the race, one of the first laps, uh, where they missed one of the turning boys and stopped uh, quite unnecessar unnecessarily, I think. But they stopped and they went on the right right side of the boy and had to catch a gap of about uh, 150 to 200 meters or so. And of course that uh, took some strength out of them. So they've, they've gone really wide of the group there and yeah. that's going to be to pick up one of the big rolling waves that's running down behind that group. Obviously boats create waves as they move through water and those waves fan out in a sort of triangular shape behind the group. We didn't see that in the pre previous junior races this this weekend. Probably they have watched and learned from the seniors. From the seniors yesterday, yep, absolutely. And of course, that's what juniors need to do, and the coaches exactly. will encourage that. They'll say, you exactly. know, watch what's happening in the senior races, see what he did there, and uh, hopefully when they re-watch, if they watch the videos, they'll see the mistakes they've made, see if there's any improvements that can be made. And, that, and that's, that's sport, that's coaching, isn't it? You, make a mistake you correct a mistake it's what's uh, what's crazy is if you make the same mistake 10 times and the seasickness uh, you can feel from that camera is because the camera is on one of the pontoons and it's also judges there on the pontoons and it's also proof that uh, the water seems like it's absolutely flat but it is some uh, wakes from from uh, the boats that uh, makes the ponton rocks a little bit. It's so flat here today and absolutely no wind and that means that uh, the wakes provide that uh, is created by the, the kayaks never dies out fully. They go rolls on and rolls on all over the lake uh, which make could make it a little bit messy sometimes. Especially after some of the turns where you meet your wake yeah. coming up the lake and you're going back and you, you end up crossing the waves you've made yourself and it seems almost a shame when the lake's this flat normally to keep it iron smooth so off they go paddling up to the top turn our next bit of excitement will be uh, the C2s arriving for their final portage and that might be quite a while yet they're not even in sight so I wouldn't be that surprised if the K2s are only just behind them by the time they get back. So all seven boats still in that K2 junior group. How many of those guys do you think think they can win, Stefan? I think at least uh, at least three of them: uh, Hungary, yep. uh, Spain, and Norway. Yeah. If I if I was Spain, I've lost too many battles coming into the portage yes. now. I, I maybe maybe settle for not a win and try to I compute everything for a second place. Yes. Rather than go for the win and miss out on everything. Mm. So, I think Hungary, Hungary, and Norway have got a genuine chance of, of winning. Beyond yeah. that. You need to start working a different plan. It's not to win the race, it's to get your best result possible from the race. And I don't think they are experienced enough for that kind of thinking. They are still focusing uh, medals, all of them. And uh, maybe Norway and Hungary, as you said, is the ones uh, focusing to win. But all, all of them will be very happy for a medal. So if you're, if you're to me, if there's four or five boats there that can't win and you've seen what's happened in all the sprints so far initially the hungarians were the quickest and the strongest now that pa balance of power appears to have changed and now i'd be looking to the norwegians as my crew and i would want to come out of the portage very nice with Shot the norwegians the technique so smooth that is lovely yeah so i'd be rearranging my race now so that i would be next door to the norwegians on their wash when the finished sprint comes and that, that arrangement needs to start to happen so that you're in a position, you don't want to be in the V-Wash behind them anymore. You want to be covering them pretty much from now on, I would say, so that you're assured of being next to them at the finishing sprint, or at least given the best chance of being next to them at the finishing sprint. 
But they are ne definitely holding an initiative now, the Norwegians. Paddling so small, uh, nicely in front of the group, setting the speed and seems to dominate the group yeah, from they've, now, they've, now on. They've got the group going at the yeah. speed they want the group to go at. The flurries of excitement have, have died down. I think mm. people have realised they can't get by. But the flurries will kick off again when people decide they want to be mm. next to them. Because everyone will, should want to be next to them for the finishing sprint. So there will be some more action later. But for now, they're content just to cover the ground. I'm not surprised that um, these two guys uh, is better the longer the distance is. They are both uh, cross-country skiers as well as uh, so many, so many uh, people in Norway are, and very fit. Both uh, guys have good trainers and uh, good clubs where they. Uh, develop themselves. I think yeah, at this level up to uh, certainly junior international level it's all about the strength of your club and the commitment of your club and primarily the commitment of the coach who turns up every day. Um, it's the consistency in training yes. at a club that's important. If, if you've got someone there day in day out who's prepared to put in their time all the juniors have to do is turn up and do what they're told. Yes. The opportunity's there and uh, to not take that opportunity is criminal, but uh, if it's there, do it. And the club is the best place to grow the athletes. The, the club coaches, they really care about these guys. They will be watching online if they're not here. A lot of the coaches are here, even who aren't to do with the national team. There are still coaches here, come to watch their athletes. It means a lot to these guys. They love these athletes. The athletes in return love them, and the results are appropriate to that. Just getting a message from the technical guys here. But it is a little bit different tradition up there in the Nordic countries um, uh, of coaches. Uh, many clubs have coaches that are there, uh, have training sessions with athletes two or three times a week and all the other sessions they are doing on their own. It's a tradition and it, okay. it, it is uh, how it is uh, up there. Certainly the strength of the club I, I grew up in and, and still am involved with now is that we have a coach who turns up every single day. He's there at 7 o'clock in the morning, he's there at 6 o'clock in the evening and you know that if you turn up to go training there will be a session organised, there will be other people in that session and all you have to do is attend. Mm. And I think that's been the strength of our club for, well, since it began. It used to be in uh, these clubs that have voluntary trainer trainers uh, that also have a, a, a normal job and um, and a family to care of uh, they uh, have training sessions uh, two three maybe four times a week um, and but the athletes need to train a lot more so they are used to training by themselves they are still pa doing it in a group and uh, gather at a specific time and do the do the sessions they are to told to do and that forms some strengths because they are used to it when they are older and absolutely absolutely need to do that. So it's also also benefits uh, with that kind of system. And what about the types of training the guys do? I mean, you've got on the water training. You've already mentioned cross country skiing. I know the Hungarians do a lot of swimming. Running is kind of constant through all nations. Absolutely. Then you've got the weight training, and there's there's so many types of training. Do you think how important is sp like each type of training or is it just training as a whole at the, at the level is, we're, we're talking about exactly now? that's a very very interesting uh, question because uh, watching the world over so many generations as we have done it seems like um, it's big differences in how people are training but they all end up the same exactly but then on the course it's just seconds or tens of seconds yeah. in between them and it's so not it's always the same nations Okay, exactly, front. exactly. So uh, th that means that uh, the only common uh, conclusion on that is that if, if you're training hard and do it wisely, you are there. Yeah. So it's not that complicated, actually. I, I think you're dead right. And I think people, especially coaches who are new to the sport or who are almost feel like they're less educated, obsess about getting doing the right sessions and doing the right quantity of sessions and actually it's not about the sessions you do it's about how you do them and how you learn to apply yourself and how you learn to commit to doing your training as it's intended and uh, that 
that generates an internal motivation in all the athletes. Because Absolutely. You can't permanently motivate an athlete from the outside. That's a very temporary mm. situation. Yeah, I mean, if you do uh, 15 times three minutes or if you do 10 times four minutes or whatever, it doesn't matter at no. all no. as long as you do uh, 50, 50 minutes of effective uh, hard work yep. out there. Absolutely. And you, and you learn to deal with a little bit of pain, a little bit of disappointment yeah. sometimes. You learn that actually when it's that painful, it's not the end. There's still a little bit more. And eventually, and I, this sounds maybe a little bit bizarre, but you learn to like that level of pain and then it becomes almost a comfort to you. You think, all right, if exactly. I'm working at this level. Exactly. I know when, when I was strong, I, my automatic assumption was that if I was hurting, then you were hurting more. Yeah, because in my mind, I'd convinced myself that I was mm. good enough to do that, mm. and it doesn't even need to be true, provided your mind believes it. Then you're prepared to deal with the pain. Now it's completely the opposite. If ever I go paddling now and I have pain, I make the automatic assumption that no one else has pain. I'm the <laughs> I'm the only one suffering, and inside I'm, I'm crying. Right in the middle here, I'm crying, and I just want to go home, and I wish everyone would slow down. But the, I think that that. That, that kind of mental discussion with yourself is really important for this. Many, many, I think that's one of the differences actually to become a world champ or just a club paddler to, uh, to be able to have that discussion with yourself that, uh, and be convinced that uh, I'm the one uh, feeling less pain than any others. Okay, now, we really need yes. shots of the K2s coming into this final turn before the uh, short lap. Definitely the Norwegians in control here. Hungarians have been bounced back down the group a little bit. And they're suffering around the corner. So of, of Can we have the camera, camera on these K2s would be good. In the red boat. There, is that the Danes in it, the red boat? It is. Coming it is around the, the front. Can, coming down on uh, the how, front down. How is that even possible? So it looks like the Norwegians from Denmark on the inside is Spain. Hungarians have been pushed into the back, coming into this final portage. And it's Germany. Germany as well out there on the far outside. Great, this this great will be Britain very, also. very, very sh challenging and uh, demanding and decisive uh, final portage. But it's Norway, it's Norway. And on their wash, uh, uh, outer wash is Denmark. Denmark. Denmark has managed to get on on a very, very good position. Realize that the Norwegians are very strong. Probably they have worked a little bit together as well. It's uh, Norway and it's Denmark and on the outer side it's Germany and it's Spain Spain on the inside and uh, Hungary is a little bit stuck to the uh, Hungary uh, after there. all the good positioning they've had now they're in trouble so it's Norway it's, it's Denmark Great Britain two washes out they really need to do something they have they've dropped round the back that's great from Ziggy Chamil so it's Hungary coming in now Spain so it's Norway from Spain from Denmark Hungary next then Great Britain they're the only oh, five oh great portage from, from Norway there Really great portraits. Although the back guy fell over. Oh he? yeah, he, f he fell over. He so fell over at the ponto. They got out so well, and he still hasn't caught up with his own boat. Boat's being dragged, and always danger now. That rudder is on the floor. Anything could go wrong. Come on! So the Come Spanish are looking good. Norwegian still hasn't caught up with his boat. If it hit, oh, oh he got just, it. In just in time, just in time. Oh my life! So it's Spain in. Hungarians have fallen over now. Where's the Benny Hill music for this? Okay, so it's Norway from um, Spain, from Norway, from Denmark, from Hungary. It seems like and they saved the their other. They are the three. The rudder it's seems Spain. to be working. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm nervous for them now. Yeah. It's Spain, it's uh, Norway, it's but Denmark. But Hungar Hungarians are done, they're out. They dropped their rudder when they slipped on pontoon. Germans are out, they're finished. Second Spanish crew, they're done. It's only Great Britain that could possibly get into the front four. But it's Spain away. Spain is away. And we totally missed the finish of the C1, C2 race, which is Spain. It's Spain. They, they pulled ahead of the Hungarians before the final portage. They've won, that's 4.06. Calvo and Garrido, congratulations to them. But let's get back to the K2 race, if we possibly can. The K2 race is uh, still Spain. Spain Spain was hiding a little bit uh, f uh, on the final lap, hiding. But now, in the final portage, they did it very, very well. It's Spain, and it's Denmark, and it's Norway. Spain, Denmark, Norway, it does not look. It's going to be hard, hard for those guys to catch the Spanish. Spanish are up and running. 
Denmark have done so much catching all the way through. They're being relied on to close the gap. Norway, is he going to regret raising his paddles at the previous portage, Stefan? Yeah. It's always that chance of yeah, failure. Yeah, yeah. So they're moving away but from the Danes now. And Maybe. now it's in C2, C2, we have the sil silver medalists. Uh, winners for uh, Ignacio Colvo and uh, Alvaro Garrido from Spain and now the uh, silver medalist from Hungary over the finish line it's uh, Martin Shiga and Shaba Savai from Hungary silver medalist in uh, uh, C2 racing so around the top turn now goes Spain they've got three or four lengths on Denmark who are doing the chasing after all the chasing they've done all day you have to be impressed by the Danes again oh in this. yeah so he was fourth yesterday in the K1 and now he's going to come second or third maybe but Great Britain haven't given up the chase so it's Denmark have dropped Norway Norway are done so can Great Britain now pick Norway off that would be a terrible thing for Norway after That's, all the good yeah, work they've done absolutely it would be great for Great Britain though so <laughs> I'm not complaining but it's Spain it's Spain all the way no one's catching them but what are the Danes doing right out there from the turn I don't know so, they yeah, took a much longer ro road there the, the Danish crew Spanish crew of changing direction to get over the C2 wash, I imagine. The bronze medalist in C2, Poland, that is uh, in the way of the K2s now. So Spain just about to overtake the C2 of Poland. Denmark looking tired in the background. Spain so, so tidy now. So tidy. They've, they've decided they've won. There's no doubt about that. It's Then it's... They were hiding their skills a little bit, uh, hiding their strength, uh, being uh, on the uh, backwash most of the uh, final lap. But now they are really g going for it. And it's Spain, it's Spain. Spain that Spain, is going Denmark, for the goal. Norway, Great Britain looking tired there. They're running out of time to catch the Norwegians. But Norwegians looking back, they're not comfortable in third. So, Port... Poland across the line in third place in the C2, very pleased with themselves. But now all eyes on the K2, that's Denmark. They have worked so, so hard today. So it's Spain, Denmark, Norway still fading. Great Britain still unable to catch them though. And then they're coming in thick and fast behind Great Britain. It's going to be Spain again behind Great Britain, then Italy, then Germany. But across the line now, it's Spain. All because they were so well organised on this last portage. Followed by Denmark. Both 318. Followed by the C2 in fourth place. And then Norway in third. Pleased with themselves in third, but really that first place was theirs to lose. Great Britain in fourth. So Denmark and Great Britain had a lot of catching up to do during that race. Spain in fifth. Italy sixth. Germany seventh. Germans also a lot of work done today and those boys have done well it all kind of disintegrated that race at that last portage absolutely we put, put our, we were willing to put our money on the, on the Norway and Hungary is second place yes they damaged absolutely. their boat on the last portage yes. not the yes. first time we've seen yes. that so it proves once again that anything can happen in the marathon racing Great Britain next yeah. across the line Magnus Gregory Luke Harding there gonna be very disappointed then Denmark, then second Italian boat. All the boys, the Hungarian C2 there, 407. But, watch, uh, the, watch this, it's great scenery now. Uh, the fellow uh, uh, companionships, so the fellow competitors there uh, swimming together. And Ivan, Ivan is uh, running, uh, running there to do some uh, interviews, both with the C2 and uh, and uh, the K2, of course. What we are experiencing here in front of the finish line is uh, great, uh, uh, great, uh, great scenery, scenery of uh, friendship among uh, the athletes from so many European nations swimming together after the finish line uh, just uh, competed with each other very very tough in a very very demanding race in excellent co co conditions and now they are relaxing all together as good friends in the beautiful crystal clear water of uh, Lake Bouchigny
And uh, we will soon have, have uh, some interviews done by Ivan Lawler, a former uh, five-time world champion in marathon racing that is joining, joining me for uh, hopefully the years to come on uh, this live television uh, commentary. And it's still a race ongoing, so hopefully uh, we, the swimming guys won't disturb the ones coming into the portage. Soon over the port, port over the finish line is also uh, Kevin Fasekas and Eric Petro from Hungary. And it's still a great atmosphere up there at the portage. Quite a big crowd shouting, encouraging the, the athletes on their final laps. Many of these guys are doing their first international marathon. And uh, they, even if they are a bit behind in the result list, it feels like a victory for them to have finalized uh, this uh, race. This race of uh, 22.7 kilometers for uh, the for the K2s and uh, 19 kilometers for the C2s. The reason it it is a little bit shorter for the C2s is that uh, uh, we have tried to to create races that in time are uh, more or less exactly the same for all the crews for all the categories. men and women and uh, the different uh, boats the same for each age group great racing this morning really great in wonderful conditions as, as you can see here on the on uh, the camera view on this lake Bochini and we are waiting for interviews now with the top crews uh, from this race And after uh, these interviews, 11.30, we will have the next uh, session, uh, K2 women and C2 men. And in K2 women, we will once again experience uh, Renata Che, who, who, will do, who will do her second marathon uh, in two days, as many, many of these athletes, athletes does. 11.30, that will start, and at 14.30 this afternoon it's K2 men. And that will be a very, very interesting race, of course. We had a wonderful K1 men race uh, yesterday, as well a wonderful K1 women race. So it's a lot to experience uh, this afternoon here with us in, at the Buchin Lake in Slovenia. And if we can go live with this, uh, with the interviews, it would be really nice now. I can see Ivan, Ivan now lining up uh, together with the Danish crew. Second place today, and quite an unusual second place. But first question to you, how much better does second feel than fourth? Uh, like, much. Much better. <laughs> yeah, like 2,000 person better. Fantastic, so fourth yesterday, second today, one of the most successful athletes here. Now today, watching your race, it didn't look like you were gonna come second, guys. I have to be honest, you didn't have the most luck. What happened at the incident where you missed the boy? Uh, the Hungarian, uh, we couldn't be on the watch, so we, uh, my partner just um, put his uh, front nose in the back of uh, the Hungarian boats, so um, the Hungarian also uh, missed the boy, yeah. and we did, so we had to uh, 
Uh, turn around. So did you think it was your fault that you missed the boy? Mm, it was our boat because we couldn't lay on the wash. We couldn't be on the wash. Yeah, our rudder was very bad. So. Okay, so because in the commentary we thought if it wasn't your fault, then maybe you should have carried on because yeah, yeah. then. But if you think it was your fault, then that explains a lot that we were talking about on commentary. So then the rest of the race, you're not in the group, guys. You're behind. This, this is not a sensible way of racing. This is not how educated people race. But then all of a sudden, coming into the last portage, boom, you're there on the on the Norwegians' wash. Now. To us, the Norwegians were going to win this race. They looked the strongest on the previous two laps. So how did you get from the back of the group to the Norwegian wash? We just uh, put a, a good face and then uh, we, couldn't lay, we couldn't be on the wash, so we just paddle our way up. Okay, and then at the last portage, a bomb goes off. The Hungarians break their rudder. The Norwegians, the back guy, can't get hold of his boat. The Spanish are gone. There was no catching the Spanish. And then you guys were the strongest. You've been catching all race and now you catch again and you're, you're the guys who come second. It's fantastic to watch. And if you want to say hello to anyone on TV while you're there, quick, it's your only chance. Hello, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Mom. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, guys. Congratulations. You did a great job. Jonathan Dagnes Hansen and uh, Søren Moretti from Silkeborg uh, Care Club in uh, Norway. And I think uh, their trainer, Finn Pappe, is really pleased with them now. Doing their first uh, international marathon in K2 uh, together and had a silver medal. We'll see if we can have some more interviews there from uh, uh, Ivan. I think he has the British uh, crew there now that came in fourth. Uh, Sigge Schmiel, that was second yesterday, uh, and uh, Russell James. I just ask completely the opposite question to the Danish guys. What did fourth feel like today after second yesterday? Well, to be honest, I think, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I mean, coming in the end of the first lap, we were, well, we were, like, we were well off the front group, so I think just catching up and being comfortable in the front group again, I think uh, I'm pretty pleased with that, even if we were just just missing out on the medals, but. Absolutely, yeah. and from commentary it looked the same. You'd fallen off the front group, guys. So, yeah, that's not ideal. That's not what you'd hope to happen. But did you benefit? There was a crash in front of you and two uh, two crews came back, didn't they, to your group? And one of them, was it was that a benefit to you? Gave you a bit of hope rather than just the group you were with? Yeah, I think it did, because uh, we could work with the group that crashed, because they finished second, I think. So we spent, the, the next lap catching up to the front group and eventually we had a pretty slick portage and uh, we caught them again. And what did you see of that last portage? I mean, every, to, the, to the commentators, let's hope we're reasonably well educated. The Norwegians were going to win that race. They looked like the strongest crew for the last couple of laps. They came into the portage first. The Spanish were out well. Norwegians failed to get hold of their boat. The Hungarians' rudder breaks. Were you aware of any of that? Yeah, well, sort of just trying to focus on what we're doing and then uh, looked up and there's just a Norwegian guy running along with his mate running behind him and then uh, then I saw the Hungarian guy slip over getting back in and I thought uh, that, slowed us, uh, that slowed us down a little bit when they cut across but yeah, it was just carnage really. It was, uh... Absolute carnage and on a, on a bit of a, a less cheerful note, your teammates Magnus Gregory, Luke Harding, they were one of the favourites for the race. They, they were out fairly early on, first portage mistake. Um, how does that feel for the team as a whole and how does it feel for you? I mean obviously you want to beat them, you're, you're a competitor, but you, do, you don't really enjoy beating them that way? No, not at all. I mean obviously it's a shame they probably would have been up in the medals or close to the same group with us. Um, but we've still got the Worlds in a few months time so that should, that should benefit them. They should be able to do well there. Absolutely. So everything to look forward to. I imagine the same two crews will be racing the world. You're the best two crews we've got. It's a great crop of juniors in the Great Britain at the moment. Absolutely brilliantly run by their own teams. And we really look forward to seeing all the crews again at the World Championships later this year. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ivan. Um, great in interviews. Um, that uh, finalised uh, the morning session here from wonderful Lake Bohin in uh, Slovenia. We will be back at 11.30 for the next session 
where we have K2 women and C2 men. Welcome back and thank you for staying by. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the Buchin Valley, uh, Valley in Slovenia to uh, the European Championships in Marathon Canoeing 2015. These wonderful surroundings on excellent conditions we will see, we will watch now K2 women and uh, C2 men. Uh, both races uh, have about uh, 10 boats, 10 crews on the start line. Um, it's not that many, but it is very, very qualified uh, crews in both races. Uh, starting with the K2 women, um, Ivan, what do you think? Well, we've just been reading through the list, Stefan, haven't we? And we're trying to work out for our commentary purposes what people have done before. And the list is endless. So you've got Renata Zai, obviously, top performer. And then we tried to... I asked you about the Swedish crew. You said, yep, definitely hoping for a medal. We looked at the Italians. Yep, definitely hoping for a medal. Great Britain. Yep, definitely hoping for a medal. So we've already got four crews hoping for three medals. And, and that's without the second Hungarian and the Spanish. Yeah, exactly. So actually, although it's a limited field, like you said, it is it's stacked. The only crew in there that neither of us are familiar with, really, is the Belgian crew, number 602, Small and, and Terry. But... Uh, we will come back it's, to uh, that. We will come back to them during uh, during the well, long long race. Yeah, we've got time to find a bit more out about them. But uh, yeah, absolutely, there's no crew in this race that you can write off. So hopefully, it will pan out to be as exciting as it looks on paper. So they're on the line now, and they are doing seven laps, a total of 26.4 kilometers. And uh, watch uh, bo boat number 605, uh, Renate Che and Alexandra Bara, who have won so many gold medals in world championships and, and re European championships to together before. The queen of marathon paddling, Renate Che, with 15 gold medals in world championships and nine now after yesterday's victory in um, uh, European championships. Boat number five in the middle of, of the line there green uh, tracksuits and they are taking the lead in their yellow boat immediately now it's the second crew or we're calling the second crew Cernak and Lux Lux has been world champion in our own right in junior way back in Singapore so she's no slouch and it's Hungary, Hungary, Sweden Great Britain and Italy all the crews that fancy their chances for medals and then just outside Great Britain, Italy you've got the Danish crew outside them Spain on the far side, Denmark again, and uh, just trailing out the backs, the two Belgians. So just exactly panning out as it did on paper. Really, all those crews very evenly matched. The Belgians, the only ones we didn't know, and it could be early days for them in the sport, but uh, a good effort just and to be uh, here. I think um, we will see Hungary working together for uh, um, at least uh, for a while. Uh, now we are uh, the second Hungarian crew uh, leading the big group, and uh, uh, Renate Che and uh, and uh, Bara on their right hand side. And Sweden is perfectly positioned there. Um, Michaela Lindblad and Emma Anderson on the left hand side uh, there, and also perfectly positioned is um, Great Britain, Ivan. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're ideally positioned at the moment because of the lack of numbers in the race. They're a little bit safer in there than you would be. If you're in that position in the men's race that we saw, the junior boys race we saw this morning. But uh, all these nations, I mean, every nation there has had a world champion in senior women's, except just barring the Spanish and the Belgians. You got Danish, you got the Hungarians, you got the Swedish, you got Great Britain, and they are, and the Italians, of course, we've had in Trioni in the past. So they're all top, top performers, and those Hungarians are piling on. They really are. So it's Hungary from Hungary. Zay has taken the lead. Great Britain nicely tucked in the back there between second Hungarian crew and the Italians. Swedes tucked out on the outside a little bit safe, but working hard. And uh, then the Danes in the yellow boat there and out to the far side with Pretzman, who was uh, fifth yesterday in the under 23. And with uh, Lena Langlund, Lena Langlund, that is a junior, and uh, she won the K2 together with uh, Catherine Rask uh, yesterday. So uh, a perfect uh, 
K2 paddler, Line Langelund, uh, powerful and uh, uh, very used to, to paddle K2 from Silkeborg in Denmark as Annemia Pretzmann, I think. So the yellow boat in there could well be the, the uh, second Spanish crew. So they were in the red tops, which has confused me. I thought they were Danish, but no. I think that's the second Spanish yeah, it crew. Is. It is. I'm easily confused by colour. Absolutely. And um, Italy is now uh, up somewhere there as well. Italy it looks very fast. We've just dropped out of the V behind the leading Hungarians. Maybe the Italians are taking it on and we've moved around to cover that move. Hopefully that's the case rather than dropping out the back. And, and there's Italy sitting there uh, in, <coughs> on the wash of uh, Renate Che and Alexandra Barra. Italy is uh, Stefania Cicali and uh, uh, Anna Alberti. Anna Alberti, of course, who had a great race yesterday. Yes. Unlike her partner who really faded out. Bit of a surprise there, but maybe she's saving herself for today. Maybe she feels that's her better option. C2's on the line now. They'll be off shortly. Try and get you some information about those. As well there, it is a very, very experienced uh, cruise. We have uh, Martin Kova who won yesterday to, together with uh, Adam Dorce. And we know both of them have done great uh, ra races uh, in the past. Hello. Martin Kova and Adam Dorce. And then, of course, Sp Spain with Oscar Grana and oh, uh, say, Ramon uh, Ferro. Absolutely. They've got so many titles to their name. We've got a list of results here and it's just filled with ones and twos. Just one, th one third place in there, but basically it's ones and twos. But it's Poland nearest to us that have taken the lead off the start. That's Trzewski and Furtak. Furtak also raced earlier this weekend. All very cleanly away. And Ukraine is well, well ahead there, as well as uh, Czech Republic. Ukraine in their blue and the blue dresses with the light blue dresses with yellow stripes. Hungary in green and Czech Republic in blue and uh, with white and red stripes on it. And it's uh, Ukraine together with yep. Czech Republic and uh, Poland on, on the left hand side. The, U the Ukraine the crew there of Levchenko and Shapoval, they were second in this event last year. So they've got form. There's so many boats in this race with form as well. I mean, you have to have Grana and Ferro as the favourites. They've won so, so many times. Ukraine was second to them last time. Up uh, The Hungarians, Dory and Schmidt. At least Schmidt was part of the crew that came fourth last time. Dory's a new partner for him, but uh, they won't have put a new partner in because he's worse, I'm thinking. They'll have uh, upgraded the crew whenever possible. So they will also be in with a shout. Last year, uh, Farrow and Ramon, uh, Ramon Faro and Oscar Grana won, and Ukraine, Levchenko and Shapoval were second. Kova and Doce haven't raced too much together in the past. Um, Doce was third, C1 junior, way back in 2009. Kova's got a list of results as long as your arm, but most significantly, the one gold medal they have together was at the World Championships last year in Oklahoma. So another crew with a great history there here's the women on screen and guess who's leading and guess who's leading hard 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 look at that so hungary one hungary two spain steamingly with a few steering problems going out wide there on the inside italy see the bow of their boat with the red green and white on they are going ex extremely hard now uh, renato Shea and alexandra barra they want they want to split and it is uh, uh, italy and the great britain and the second hungarian and the swedes have dropped off a bit now, i've spoken before about wanting to be in that diamond wash when the strongest yeah. leader is leading you couldn't <laughs> You couldn't plan it better than that. That's no, uh, it's absolutely it's a perfect. relief for our girls to be there, I'm sure. If you're going to go on the side wash, much rather do that when the slower crews are yes. leading. But there you have confirmation on screen. Zar, Barra, Lutz, Cernak, Sikali, Sikali, Lamp from Broughton. We've got a bit conflicting information on the Italian crew on screen there. It's Sikali, Sikali. But it's on, not. I saw it was it's, uh, Alberti. It's Alberti yes. actually in the boat. Alberti, of course, who raced yesterday. And he did and, so well. And raced very well. Sip on a rather nice cup of coffee there from uh, just up in the concession up on the hill. 
So uh, all the uh, medalists from yesterday are there, Renata Che who won and Lizzie Broughton who was second yesterday and Alberti who was uh, third. So they are all uh, all starting here uh, this morning as well. Yeah, also uh, Faye Lamp who finished fifth. And um, that um, that is quite interesting because uh, together Lizzie Broughton and uh, and uh, Faye Lamp has the be- best best uh, track record uh, best average be- best average yeah. uh, from from yesterday yeah. and they they've they've got history i mean they won this race before and i'm sure they're hoping to win it again it was uh, 2013 in portugal when they won it last third last year fourth back in france and it's really an uncomfortable line of fours on their results history. They've come fourth so many times, and, and we all know how painful fourth is. Yes. It's a great result. You're the fourth best there is, but it's uh, it's more than one step down from being the third best, isn't it, somehow? It is. It's it a is. painful position to come, and, and now they're in a group of four again, and uh, it's going to take some doing. But they look comfortable. Italians happy to lead. We saw Alberti leading pretty much for the first two laps yesterday. And she seems comfortable doing that again. But Renata Say also knew she led two laps yesterday. Yeah. She's yeah. happy maybe to let her do the same again. Absolutely. And will make the same break again at the same stage of the race. She knows she can do it. Yeah, but uh, usually she um, she uh, waits a little bit longer in K2. I think... Uh, that's her tactics because uh, she uh, are doing uh, two races in a row, so she take a little bit. She's a little bit more calm uh, usually in K2. Calm or tired? <laughs> yeah. No, get, no, avoiding getting tired yeah, to, be, yeah. to be a little. Bit. But late, last year, uh, Idina Chernak uh, won, who is racing here uh, with the Lux uh, Nomi Lux uh, today. Uh, but uh, last year she was racing together with Enike Vakshai, another of these top perfor- performance uh, Hungarian marathon paddlers that we have been seeing around since. Uh, since uh, Singapore 2011, actually, where she, Vakshai, uh, first appeared on as a medalist, then as a junior. She, she is 22 now. But for, for the other crews, there is some hope on that, because Lux also has some fairly poor results. She was 10th back in Copenhagen. Yeah. And a crew that can come 10th, you know they can be broken. Absolutely. So that it's not like they're, they're invincible then. It's, you know, if you see a list of results like Renata Jay has, where, where are you going to find the gaps? But you do know that if someone's come 10th in the past, either it was an accident, a rudder, as we saw this morning, or maybe they capsized, or maybe the race just got too hard and they faded. So we got the C2s now, struggling a little bit to get around the top turn. Hungary, Poland, Spain, Ukraine. Oh, Hungary, Spain, Spain, and Ukraine. I wish the Spanish would all wear the same clothes. Yeah, they should, but... And the second Hungarian crew there struggling to get around the turn. They've been chipped off the back of that group. But still a group of four. And there may be a development in the senior women's race. Yes, there is. It's Renata Zay. They've broken free. They're going with the Italians only. The Italians are going to be prepared to do their share of the work. They all know that. So it's two boats in the lead group, two boats in the second group. The Hungarians are making chase. Faye and Lizzie holding on to those Hungarians. They desperately need to stay with those two. If that gap's going to be closed, it needs to be closed with them as well. So we didn't get to see what happened there. Maybe there was an incident. The judges' boats are alongside them so if there was anything that happened I'm sure it will be noted but that gap although it's only small it's only three or four lengths at this stage you very rarely see anyone close down Renata Zay from that distance behind the Italians are taking the lead now that might give some hope to the chasing crews but Alberti yesterday was very happy to work hard and very happy to work for a long long time
same development, uh, more or less, as, la as yesterday then. Anna Alberti and uh, Stefania Chikali pulling ahead. Stefania Chikali, who didn't have a good day yesterday, uh, maybe saving some strength for, for today's race. It's very hard. It opens up so many doubts in your mind, I think, if you double up. Yeah. Because when things aren't going well for you in the in the first race... You need a lot of confidence. Little voices come on your shoulder telling you to stop yeah. because you've got tomorrow's race. And then another voice comes on the other shoulder saying, no, you must go on because that's what you're here to do. It's your job. And and, and you hate not racing when you're a racer. You, you do feel bad if you give up, don't absolutely, you? Absolutely, absolutely. But it, uh, uh, yesterday we saw Stefania uh, trying and trying during the first laps. And then we were surprised she continued. But we were mistaken, actually. She did stop and saved her strength. But Anna Alberti made a great race uh, yesterday, a very exhaust, exhausting race as well. Uh, and you can recognize her in the in the back of uh, of this boat. Her very characteristic technique. A it's not a technique you teach deliberately, no, is no. it? It's uh, it's a little bit unusual. There's improvements you would think you could make to that, but it's obviously very effective for her. It was some years where uh, some scientist uh, told the paddlers that it was more powerful to have the hand above the head and push forward. I think she learned to paddle during that period, just a couple of years. Maybe it was uh, more powerful, but it is also too, uh, more tiring. And it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. No, uh, you it's see not smooth. It's not uh, like yeah. the Hungarians used to say. It's not like dancing. Yeah. So, in the second chasing group, Faye Lamp, Lizzie Broughton, and the two Hungarians, Luc Cernak, they've got decisions to make, haven't they? Yes. Do they just stop and race each other, or do they consider themselves to still be in the hunt for first place? Yeah. But anything could happen. It's seven laps. And, we, and we've seen so much, even this yeah. morning on that last portage of the junior men. I mean, it, it was literally like a bomb had gone yeah. off and in the middle of that group. The Hungarians were out, the Norwegians, instead of being the powerhouse uh, that we'd seen yes. before. And the junior K2 uh, yesterday uh, pro proved that yeah. anything could happen. Yeah. When, but it's uh, very hard to, to hold those positive thoughts when you're in that absolutely, position. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you've got doubts, and already there's two crews back there hoping they're not going to come forth. <laughs> it's uh, there's so many. I think they will go on. I, I don't think, uh, as I know, the British, uh, the two British girls, oh, they, they, never they give work up. all yeah, day. Yeah, they, they never give up. Never ever. It's a British tradition, never giving up on anything. I think. <sighs> I don't know. I think I might have lost that tradition. I give up quite a lot these days, Stefan. <laughs> <I, laughs> we are old men now. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, you get a culture in a team and you know it's unacceptable. I think that was one of the things we talked about Jim Rossiter before. Yeah, if, if you didn't finish your race, you knew that that wasn't acceptable. And you knew that however much people said, you know, bad luck, better luck next time, you knew that you were not in favour mm. if you didn't finish your race. Yeah, he was, it's and a good he was also very, very supportive to, to the guys that continued in spite of any accidents. Yeah. I remember yeah. once in Vienna, I was uh, about six minutes uh, behind because I was falling in. Right. And the only one waiting at the uh, at the porches was Jim Rossiter. Right. The Swedish uh, support they crew had left, <laughs> but he was waiting. He knew I was coming and I got great support from him. And, uh, appeared to be second in that race, so never give up. <coughs> so C2's in shot again, and guess what? Hungary, Spain, again. Yes. It's quite an interesting uh, start field. Uh, Martin Kerber and uh, Adam Dotsche, who won the, the World Championships last year. Uh, yeah, Martin Kerber, that is born 1987, and Adam Dotsche, uh, 1992. So they are in the midst of their perfect age for to be a, a, a top of the world athlete. But they won. Contrast that to the Spanish ages. Yes. You're uh, looking. You're looking at Grana, who's 38, and Ferro, who's 36. Yes. And um, Grana. A combined age of 74. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> 
born 1976 and 1978. These two guys. Yeah. And they um, half the guys you raced this morning weren't even born then. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, amazing athletes. When these guys were first winning medals. And they uh, exactly. And uh, Oscar Grana and Raman Ferry were third in the world championships, uh, and they won the European Championships last year. Uh, and then um, uh, Sanchez and Campos, uh, they were second in the World Championships and didn't participate but, in but the... But for Ferro and Grana, that third in the World Championships represents a disaster. I mean, if you look at their... In Banyolas in 2010, they were first. In Rome in 2012. Denmark in 2013. European Championships. They're, ri they're right there all the time. First in Poland, first in Portugal, first last year in Piestini. It's just first, 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 first. A third is like a, a proper blot on their record. Yes. But then yesterday, maybe, yeah, in the K1, maybe you saw the effects of age on, on uh, the Spanish team. They looked so dominant for the first part of the race, and then eventually the youth caught up with them. So maybe, maybe there is a limit after all. I guess there has to be a limit. You can't have people who are 90 out here, can you? As the Jert Fredriksson, the world, uh, the famous um, uh, Peller from uh, 1948 and uh, Olympics and the Olympics from the 50s used to say, you know, if you continue good uh, long enough, everyone could be a uh, uh, champion. It's just a question of survival. Uh, when we started the Masters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was I guess not it, very positive but, to but Masters <laughs> racing. <laughs> but, I mean, sometimes the Masters list looks slightly depressing because as you work up through the ages, so the start list gets smaller and yeah, smaller exactly. and, and you realise that... That's what he meant, yeah. It's, uh, he had a point. So Italians still leading in the women's K2. Hungary content to sit with them. And you wonder, you know, is Zai just waiting for the portage where she breaks away is that is that the plan she always works to a plan like that really doesn't she 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 takes yes. an opportunity at some stage we saw in the k1 yesterday over i think three porches she gave it two little goes that didn't pan out she takes that look over her shoulder sees what damage she's done but then finally when she took the look and the damage was enough boom she was gone yes but i think we will see her uh, relaxing a little bit more today, here today. Yeah. I think uh, she is uh, quite pleased uh, to have the Italians uh, with with yeah. her to do uh, all the hard work. And a lot of the athletes you speak to after these events are complaining about the heat yes. out there. Yes, yes. So it's it very, is very, very draining. Warm. Yeah. As Martin Kerber said yesterday, yeah, the, the race was one thing, but the heat, to combat the heat, that was the big, big thing for him yesterday. It's strange because for us, we're sat in a nice white tent, a little breeze coming through, and it is hot in here, but it's not oppressively hot, is it? Uh, exactly. But out on the lake there, obviously, you know, these athletes train, you know, the Spanish, the Portuguese, especially, I mean, they train in the sun. Yeah. Uh, that's what they do, and, and they're still complaining. So it is brutal out there. It is, and the water is uh, is also quite warm, actually, even if it is uh, mountain water. It's crystal clear, and in front of us here, it's uh, hundreds of fishes uh, swimming around. Uh, it's crystal clear. We can see as deep as uh, five, six meters uh, clearly. It's, it's quite interesting. People who've been up to the far end of the lake, so there's a waterfall coming in, the it mountain is. melt, that is ice, ice cold. If you put your hand yes. in it, your hand goes numb. Yeah. But that water obviously sinks straight to the bottom of the lake. And from putting out the pontoons for the timing system, they know the lake is 40 metres deep where the timing system is. Yes. So at the bottom of that, it's going to be cold, cold. But the sun is so warm, it's warm the top layer up. And the water, you can easily walk into the water without having to flinch. It's, uh, it's an it is beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's in, uh, interesting um, uh, also to know that... Um, the water, water in this lake is replaced every 48 hours fully uh, by the water coming in from the mountains and dropping out in the far end of, of, of the lake down to Bled, uh, the lake of Bled, that is uh, the second lake in, the, in a row of lakes uh, with, a rivers, with a river in between down to the Adriatic Sea. A nice long shot there. You can see the gap that's opened up in the women's K2. And now we move back to the to the C2. So at the front there, Hungary, Spain, 
behind them. It's going to be Hungary and Poland, I think. Or maybe Ukraine and Poland, actually. But we'll, as they go around the turn, just a couple of minutes, we should be able to get confirmation of that. I think it's Ukraine and Poland. It would, uh, that would make sense, the Ukraine second this event last year. You would think they'd still be in with a shout at this stage. I'll see if we can get the Yarvis uh, Stefan's just off. See if he can... No. See if he can find a bit of technical help so that we can have a permanent view of the lap count. The view that comes up on your screen every now and then. In theory, we should be able to have it in the commentary box here, but the internet links are limiting us both on output of the pictures and information we can get in the commentary box. But if we can get that uh, time view on our computer screen, it would make life an awful lot easier. And maybe we will sound slightly less uh, badly informed on occasion. So it's Spain, Hungary, behind them, white shirts, that's all I can tell you. It'll either be Spain or Poland, maybe. And we'll have to wait until they come around the turn. But they seem fairly close to those front two again. So as those guys go up towards the uh, top turn, I can see from the commentary box that uh, the women are heading down now. It's clearly the two boats out front, but maybe those second two are possibly being caught. We'll wait for pictures, no rush on that, but uh, as that race unfolds, it looks like there more, might be more crews entering the uh, battle for third place. So here we go, Granan Ferro versus Kova and Doce, as it has been so many times in the past. They know an awful lot about each other's strengths and weaknesses. When you race somebody that many times, honours pretty much shared. You'd have to say on balance that uh, Granite and Ferro have got the edge, but they are the aging crew. There behind them, it is the second Sp the, the Spanish crew. So Sanchez, Campos, only marginally younger in that boat, combined age of 59. But they've also got history, second in the World Championships behind Doce and Kova last year and ahead of their compatriots. So they're, they're, not, they're not unused to beating the uh, top crew of Grana and Ferro. Third the year before in Rome. So those front three, the two Spanish crews and the Hungarians, they are consistent habitual medalists. Got some view of the size of the cliffs and the trees, forest here. And there's the front two women. As it has been for a lap now, it, Italy, Hungary, sharing the lead and making good steady progress. When we get a pan back to the second group, we will find that that is a group now of four or five. Here we go now. It's looking good and this is where the interest is going to be. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Six boats in that second group. So Great Britain leading, Sweden to their left, Hungary to their right. Spain tucked in the back. Spain also on the far side and Denmark on the far right of the group. So pretty much the only boat not to be in that group is the Belgian crew who dropped off early days. But we got the two main contenders out the front in shot now. They're coming around the turn. Just in front of the commentary position, around the second of the five boys, and it's Hungary leading Italy. 
Italy have got some work to do, they've got some thinking to do if they're going to take on the might of Hungary here. It's going to be very, very interesting. So, so peel off from the turn and head towards the first portage. It's going to be pretty much routine for these two. Sakali, of course, will be very aware that last year in Oklahoma at the final portage, it was an accident that broke their rudder that stole a medal from them. They were going to be either second or third and a little bit of carelessness, a knocked off rudder and it was game over for them. So she will be, hopefully, a little bit more cautious here. There's no rush. It's going to be the Hungarians in first. Followed by Italy, Hungarians right of the pontoon, Italy left. There will be caution, you'd hope. No rush from either crew there. Nice and tidy, both the fronts of the boats out well. And clean away. Something dropped from one of the boats, but I think it was just a drink bag. But the real race now, as in the little bit of excitement, is that the remaining six crews are coming in. It's Hungary leading into the portage. It's Great Britain to their left, Spain, Sweden. So as the leading two leave the portage, that's your view. I've got a view of the Hungarians leading. The second group, Great Britain, Sweden is in that order coming into the portage. Spain being held off by the Swedes. And it's Hungary out first. Great Britain out second. Spanish have run right to the end of the pontoon and they're struggling now. They're struggling to get out. They're fifth out. They were third in, fifth out. And it's the Danes bringing up the rear, running up the pontoon. There, here they come running through the portage now. All running reasonably well. Lamb from Broughton there. Following the Hungarians down the left-hand side of the pontoon. Sweden and Spain going right. Second Spanish crew also going left. Brilliant by the British girls there. Nose of the boat outside the Hungarians. Out of trouble. Swedes getting in their boat, but it's the two that had broken away before who were away first. Hungary, Great Britain. I think Great Britain for sure will be prepared to work to keep that gap. But they were caught before. And it's how much work you're prepared to do, knowing that you might be caught again. So, on screen confirmation of position is a gap 44 seconds now between the lead group and this chasing pack. Hungary clearly not up for doing some work. So, Great Britain take on the job. Hungary happy to sit and gain advantage from the wave that that Great Britain boat is making. Bit of a gap to the Swedes. Cuddle. Lynn Blad and Anderson, who are with the Spanish crew. Both Spanish crews. And it's the Danes, Pretzman and Langland. Langland so strong in the back of the junior K2 yesterday. She's under 18, taking on the seniors here. That looks like it's going to be a tough job to close the gap.
Okay, so here we come. Head on shot of the sea boat race coming into the first portage. So, as it has been for so long, Hungary, Spain, but only just behind them now, Spain and Ukraine. So, all the serial medalists still in with the hunt. The Hungary leading Spain. From the angle I'm sitting at, it looks like the Hungarians are taking Spain to the left-hand side of the of the pontoon. Which isn't the most friendly thing, but Spain fairly relaxed about that. They've just dropped in behind them. And coming to the right is Ukraine. So off go the Hungarians. Followed by the Spanish. So Doce and Kova, Ferro and Grana, Campos, Sanchez, and Levchenko and Shapoval. No incidents, no accidents. And fairly smoothly down to the get in. Quick empty of the boat. It really looks like this group's going to close up to a group of four. The Kova Doce motivated enough to paddle strongly from the portage. Three lengths ahead of Grana Ferro. Only two lengths ahead of chasing Ukrainians and the second Spanish crew. So that race is closing up nicely. And as they leave the portage, the next group of four C2s come in at the other end. But really, the medals are going to come from these four as they have done over the past several years now. So as the uh, timing system also almost comes online in the commentator's box, we're almost flooded now with information on times for for each section of the course. We could probably bore ourselves with, to death with that, let alone you. So back to the women's K2. Alberti, Sicali, pressing on. Hungarians content to sit and wait and sit and wait. There's a horrible inevitability really about this. Italians putting up a good fight but from the commentary we've been wrong so many times this weekend about how we saw the race panning out. In the junior K2 earlier today we picked the Hungarians and the Norwegians as the probable winners and failed with both. But there is slightly more history in the ladies K2 to work from. So hopefully we're slightly better informed. And there you have it, C2s. That's the second group leaving the portage. They don't look particularly motivated to close down the medalists. And that's a race within a race. There's another crew somewhere. There were four came in at least, and there they are. There's the other Ukrainian crew. Chasing group of women's K2s. Hasn't been rejoined by the Danish crew. Pretzman Langland. They've got a lonely journey by themselves. So it's the Hungarians leading. 6.03, Lutz and Cernak. From the Swedes, Lindblad and Anderson. Great Britain, Faye and Faye Lamp, Lizzie Broughton. And the two Spanish crews, Fernandez, Villachi, and Massages, and Arquero. So that is going to be a really interesting race. Only one of those crews is going to come out of this with a medal. There's the Danes just trawling around behind, but. If you remember earlier today, the Danish Junior K2 did exactly that. 
loitered around behind the group. You struggled to convince me that was intentional, but uh, they still had the strength to come through at the latter stages and pull the medal at the end of the day. Pretzman has got a history of top six finishes. Langland, already a winner this weekend. So as the group changes shape in front of them, a bit of a flurry of excitement. It's a view that uh, Pretzman and Langland are going to have to get used to over the next couple of laps. Quite a size difference in that Italian K2, and which never looks too tidy. But a lot in his, through history, there's been an awful lot of good K2s with a huge size difference. The one that really springs to mind, probably arguably the best K2 ever, East German, Blum and Gutsch. They had a similar size difference. Kai Blum in the front was a long, long limbed, very tall guy. Torsten Gutsch in the back was shorter. And they had this same sort of size difference. And no one would ever argue with them being absolutely spot on in terms of timing togetherness and they used to destroy fields even absolutely. down a thousand meters they would just go ahead and go further ahead and further ahead and even further ahead and when you watch them paddling it didn't look like they were they uh, paddling the same rate uh, no. but it, it looked strange it looked it, slightly awkward if you yes. took a visual but if yes. you had, if you watched how the boat moved it was just surging yeah, yeah. surging surging absolutely phenomenal so the size doesn't matter, it's the timing in the water. Even the visual of the, the paddles out of the water is not important. I have to say that because when I paddled with Grayson Bourne on the, on the sprint races, visually it didn't always look the best, but I can assure you that in the water, the feel of Grayson pulling is very strong paddler indeed. And he was perfectly in time with me, even if it didn't look like it. So here we go, Hungarians matched for size and technique there maybe that's through having more choice of paddlers that they put together and here's the C2s struggling I think that's Kova and Doce in view there with the Spanish and Ukrainians behind if that is the case then Ferro and Grana are in front of them but I'm a little bit unsure that I've got the right Hungarian crew we'll find out in just a moment yeah that is that's Doce and Kova on their own so they're either Ferro and Grana are either behind them with the Ukrainians or out of shot in front I think actually Ferro and uh, Kova and Doce Judging by the flatness of the water in front, they they have to be leading, right? Yes, they are. Yep. They are. Absolutely. A great lap for them. Just go, keeping on. So they were never closed down after that last portage. A, no, a gap of exactly. four or five lengths. And they've still got that gap. Well, they've increased it slightly. Eight seconds. We know that uh, Martin Cover hates the heat. And the Spanish guys loves it. So... <laughs> So that's going to come into play later Absolutely. in the race, isn't it? But, uh, the Ukrainians uh, did a marvelous uh, race last year in the Europeans and finished uh, second. So they are absolutely up there. They, they weren't in the World Championships, I think, because that was in Oklahoma. They couldn't re really afford to, afford to go there. Uh, but um, well, someone's birthday, look. They're looking quite old. There's quite a lot of candles yeah, on that cake. Yeah. You reckon it was it's Jim? He's quite old. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? He doesn't seem like. Oh, we, we, we panned away from the birthday cake, unfortunately, so we never found out whose birthday it was. Uh, but we panned out just as uh, Renata Say takes her turn leading the front pair. And they're coming in to the boys shortly in front of us, which precede the portage by about a minute or so. And... 
they are going quite tough now, now again. Yeah, they're working hard. It may, maybe this is a point where say is stringing them out a little bit before the portage. Maybe she'll run hard and it might be her chance to to get away. It, it seems it's quite early for that, but uh, it's only their second portage after all. There you go, around the boys. That's the first of the boys. Coming up to the second now. And they're definitely pressing on. Recreational paddler enjoying the beauty of the lake just behind them. As are all the sunbathers and holiday makers on the beaches. And up at the, the previous turn, it was uh, 1 minute 15 seconds uh, between these two, uh, these two crews and uh, the ones coming after. And these ones were actually five. Villas Fernandez from Spain, Lindblad Jonsson and uh, Li Michaela Lindblad and Emma Anderson from Sweden, uh, Cernak Luch uh, from Hungary, Massages and uh, Olmedo from uh, Spain and uh, Lamp Broughton from Great Britain. All of them within three seconds. So they are in a tight group of five together. But now in, com in coming to the portage still, they're, they're really they're really shifting, aren't yes, they? They're, yes. They're not messing about the, here. The speed is quite high. They're coming into the portage. That. Hungarians right, Italians obviously chosen left. Well, chosen, they were given. Um, interesting, the girl in the back of the Hungarian boat Perfect is making no boat, effort yeah. to slow the boat down. No. They're relying on Renata Zay to stop it when she holds the pontoon. Yes, yes. It would be very helpful for Renata if the girl at the back was helping I think, to slow uh, down. I think they want um, not to stop too much. No. So keep the speed, keep the movement going. They're running strongly as well. The Italians keeping up. The Italians, the fear in the Italian boat of a gap opening up yes. is extreme. You will run hard. Absolutely. And we've do. all been in that position. Absolutely. They do everything they, they can not to, uh, to have a gap. It's, it's less expensive to run hard there than to try and yes. catch two or three yes. lengths, on, especially on yeah. Renata Zay. Both away. But again, that's yeah. hard out of the porches. They're not yeah, messing about. Tough. Renate is pressing on now. Really tough. The but Italians uh, full on. They're full on yeah, just to try and get on. back to that yeah. wash. And they've Maybe, managed to do that. And they've done yeah. it. So we didn't see it, but Renata would have had a little look behind yeah. and, and done a bit. Stopping made them and work. adjusting the drinks. And so it's a test. It's it was, a test. It was, a, it was, a, it was an experiment. For and now uh, the group of four and f Sweden is uh, lagging behind a little bit, but it's Hungary and it's Spain, uh, both Spanish, both Spanish crews, crews and uh, Great, Great Britain, Britain tucked in the and back. Sweden there. Come on, girls, let's get out of the boats. Front up, grab the back. Ah, uh, the Swedish girls lifted in, in the back before. So now the front has got all the water and she has to lift yeah. that up the ramp. So, here we go. I mean, a tidy portage from the Hungarian support yeah. crew there. Yeah. So there goes Hungary, they're going to be first back into the water. And there's our cameraman, half man, half fish, back in the water. And do you know what I found out yesterday? I'll tell you when all the excitement's over, but it's very interesting. So it's Hungary in their boat, Great Britain in theirs, they're away, Great Britain away now, going to get up to speed quickly to make contact with the Hungarians again, Spain very tidy away with the Great British team and there's another Spanish crew somewhere, haven't seen them yet, bit of a gap and there they are. So anyway, about the half man half fish, legend has it in Slovenia that there is such a thing called the gestrin. The gestrin? Yeah. Wow. Otherwise known as the waterman, who, if children and stuff fall into the lakes, then the gestrin is the man who looks after them. Wow. So there you go. I wasn't wrong about the half man, half fish. He is for real. Wow, that's great. What is amazing is that the organization have persuaded him to pick up a camera for the day. Wow. And, and yeah, that's yeah. that's great. So you, you turn out to not only be a kayaking expert, also culture one. Well, while I'm just attending meetings all the time. <laughs> well, you're a busy man. I, I get, <laughs> I'm home alone in the evenings That's here. Great. You're, you're yeah. organising all the coverage for the next two competitions. 
and I'm a sad, lonely man in my room, hotel room, looking up Slovenian myths in my evening. Actually, to be fair, last evening we were both at a function. Yeah. Up on the top of the mountain in the ski resort, which is absolutely phenomenal. We can just see the top of the mountain from here. And we went up in the it's cable up there, car. Where, where the camera points now. Yeah. Up there in the in the mist on top of the mountain, on the, on the peak, the closest peak there. And you can only imagine the view from up there. We see straight down on the lake. At this end of the lake where we're sitting, the valley's very much a U-shape, obviously carved out by, you would think, a glacier at some stage some, being, being that like shape. That, yes. And, uh, yeah, it, it was absolutely phenomenal out there. If you want to come up for a quick ski holiday in the winter, couldn't recommend it enough. Or a hike. As the mountain guide said, come in September, because uh, then it's no people. In August, quite crowded on the trails. It's so, about C2s coming around the portage before the turn. You can't see them yet. We've got the rear view of the second group of women in shot. And the Swedes are really struggling on that. They're not closing that gap, it doesn't seem. So this is how close the first three in the C2 race are now. So Hungary, from the Ukraine, from Spain, all the usual suspects. Very erratic steering from the Ukrainian crew there, just to get outside the waves of the Hungarian boat. But these Ukrainians, they're moving well. Absolutely. Shapoval and Levchenko. It's actually Grana that is suffering here. Just off the back of the Hungarians. But they are closing the gap now. They are definitely closing the gap. So the effort of the Hungarians lost the one full lap. Full lap of breakaway and closed down. Does that mean the breakaway is wasted if it's been closed down? I don't think, to, think so. Not in C2. They, they have made a test. They still made the others work harder than yes. they were working. Yes. They still gained something from it. So here they come through the portage, the Hungarians. Bucket of water over the head. One each. No drinks. They may have one in their boat. Ukraine coming and Spain both coming to the right hand side of the portage. So it's Hungary, boat in the water first, into the boat. Ukraine also, they're going to leave at exactly the same time. If not, the Ukrainians actually left first. Yeah. So they, they were clean in their boat, but all three together. And I would imagine now, with that breakaway closed down, that they'll have a bit of downtime. A little bit of recovery each before the race starts again in a couple of minutes, maybe. Interesting with the Ukrainians. They are... Uh, uh, um, ordinary sprint paddlers coming in once a year doing uh, marathon races and they do very very well they look beautifully smooth oh, they got quite a oh uh, here go the, the Spanish they're going to try and cause a change in shape no I think they were just steering the, see how the smaller guys in the back of the Ukrainian boat he reminds you back in the old days of Nielsen and Frederick. Yeah, who that's were, right. Who were so so tidy yeah. in their boat, weren't they? And you see that you see the sea boats as they lunge as the as the paddler's weight goes forward. Well, yeah. Nielsen and Frederickson had no weight, so the boat always ran beautifully smooth, didn't it? And they they obviously won this race as well as lots of 10ks and, yes. and e even medals in the thousand yeah. meters. Yeah. From Denmark, Nielsen and Frederickson during the 90s. Like Ar arch enemies and arch rivals of Train and Train, who, yeah, who are exactly similar in their their smoothness paddling. This was way back. We're talking now. We're going back to our era, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the best era there ever was. Of course. Way back in the 90s. Every era era should be the best era ever for the athletes athletes involved. Involved. That's one of the big things with sport. If you can make the athletes feel that way, in shot it's now. Really good. Trailing groups of C2 Hungarians, all three coming to the same side of the pontoon, confused things a little bit there. The Hungarians couldn't get to their boat initially, but calm, they waited. And the little insert in the top right hand corner just shows the women's K2 procession. 
for those front two. Again, buckets of water over the head. It's Schmidt and Ori from Hungary. Labouring a bit in the run. They're not as smooth as the front group. And Portuguese po Portugal and Poland. There. Portugal, Machado and uh, Vieira from Portugal. Into the boat smoothly. Portuguese, bit of a delay getting their boat in. Look a little bit uncomfortable getting in there. But Hungary away, Poland away with them. And the Portuguese will have to hunt them down. Just a couple of lengths. There they come now. And it's uh, Gluta and Kostensky from Poland. Both of them, uh, especially Glusa, have done uh, many marathon races uh, before. As have as has Machado in the Portuguese boat. Yes, we've seen him in races previously. But they uh, they look uncomfortable. They stop paddling. They're faffing about a little bit. Maybe organising some drinks for themselves from bottles in the boat. But they don't look comfortable there. Poland had a bronze medal in the, the C2 uh, category last year in the European Championships. Looks like the Swedes regained contact. Yes. With and the um, second group of ladies. So it's Great Britain from Hungary, from Spain, from Spain and from Sweden. And the distance between uh, uh, the two flying in front, Shikali uh, and uh, Alberti and Shea Barra uh, to um, the, the second group uh, down here uh, at the Portage was 1 minute 20 seconds. So they increased the gap in 5 seconds uh, from uh, from the point where they approach now down to here. And now we'll see how much it is when they pass once again up here. Just going to give the Spanish another penalty point there for chucking their drinks bag in the water. We discussed this at our meeting last night, meeting of sort of officials and ICF. That's my first experience of a true official gathering, Stefan. I, I was very impressed. And actually, to get my goodie bag, I had so many goodies in my goodie bag, the handle came off. That's how good it was, I tell you. You've never seen so many goodies given away. I've got free cheese. I've got free wine. I've got brochures, tourist brochures, stickers, balloons, you name it. No one left unhappy last night from that. It's a lot of good things to bring home, both to your wife and your kids then. As it always is, um, hospitality used to be great. And of interest to people watching, the main organiser of this event actually very much uh, resembles the guy from Family Guy. I'll show you. Uh, how about that, Stefan? What do you think? <laughs> So anyone who, who knows Peter from the Family Guy cartoon, you've basically met the organiser of this Bohine competition. Separated at birth, what do you reckon, Stefan? I yes. <laughs> they're like twins, uncanny, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's kind of British. <laughs> no, it's an Amer American cartoon. That. It's, uh, but yeah. So that's just a brief aside. <laughs> The Here big, we go. The big, the big, big group second group. Of, uh, women, British girls, been leading since the last turn, and maybe even before that, when we were watching the C2 race. If I can find the computer skills to put pictures up later on the Facebook page of. The Euro Marathons, I will put a uh, compare and contrast between the uh, family guy and the organiser. Uh, that group of three C2s, Ukrainians taking the initiative. This was interesting, uh, the time gap between the first and second group is now up there 53 seconds actually. So okay. they have gained 
a bit. Which is a surprise because they maybe that that front pair have slowed down on this lap because they were certainly when they came in round the last turn to the last portage, they were they were shifting when they yeah. there was no doubt about that. So maybe a bit of downtime for them. Yeah, we saw that happen yesterday as, as well, uh, when Renate had established a good enough gap for herself, she slowed down and just had a nice little easy afternoon paddle to the finish. And today I think um, they will try to save some strength to so really compete each other on the final, final lap later on here today. So they're on lap four now. And uh, is it coming down to the third portage? They're certainly not hanging around those front two. Alberti pushing on, and the reasons I is just taking the lead now as they're coming into the turn that leads to the portage and Zay definitely likes to come into the portage first I don't think we've ever seen her I think the gap has increased again yeah, maybe, maybe the, the technology was a bit misleading there yeah. because that gaps really has opened up you're we looking at over two minutes there aren't we you? do have very bad internet connection so it could fail a bit So Renata Zay taking command around the turn, which isn't a position that's unfamiliar to her. Yeah, now we got a right result from from the previous uh, tur turn there, the turn that uh, the second group just passed, and now it's uh, actually two minutes eleven seconds. That makes sense uh, that to what we are seeing here. Uh, I was misreading this. I was reading the total time. Which was, which was 50, <laughs> 53 minutes. We, we've got some learning to yeah, do, right? Yeah, we, we have. It's so much new technology now, and the, which we have developed, especially for canoeing, in a great effort over the years. Watching the, the Hungarians come towards us now, you can see how much that boat lifts every time they pull. There's a lot of downward pressure on those paddles, lifting the boat. And each time they paddle, the boat if anything twitches towards the side they're paddling on, not away from it. It's a really important thing that if the boat leans away from the side you're paddling on, then you know that your body weight is not coming onto those paddles. So in they come. Ah, oh, she's helping out a bit more in the back this time. Probably had a uh, word with her after the yeah. last portage. Hungary. The Hungarians away well. Italians uh, also away. Perfect coordinated Hungarian Hungarians. And Alberti neatly taking off her drinks on the portage, leaving it there. Now front paddlers can be remarkably selfish on the portage. If they hold that cockpit right at the front as Zay is, that back paddler has at least two thirds of the weight of that boat. Yeah. And you know how much you care when you're the front paddler? Not at all. <laughs> you just run and you keep shouting at them for not being able to keep up, despite the fact that they're carrying at least twice as much weight as you are. The benefit of the front paddler holding it at the front is they've got much more control over the direction of the front of the boat and that makes their life a lot easier. So there is a reason why they do it, but it is slightly unfair to the back paddler. You can see on the boats now, on the Italian boats, they have uh, grips. The handles, yep. Handles, yeah. Uh, some crews are using that. And that. That's one of the reasons why for that back paddler, because it takes them further towards the back of the boat and the weight distribution is a little bit better. But you can see Sakali there in the front. She's actually got a handle in front of the front cockpit. Yep. So she's even more selfish than I used to be. <laughs> Some, it's more and more common uh, with these uh, new boats to use uh, handles. That's it, with the old design, there used to be almost a ledge that you could hold yeah. with your fingers. It was very easy to grip. It's no ledge anymore in these very narrow boats. They are more or less built uh, for the width of the hips of the athletes which was uh, quite a great thing when uh, they took away the, the uh, formal rules on the width of yeah, the boat. It was a big deal and 
here we see we'll talk about the the width of the boats and stuff after these yes. next crews have, have cleared the portage but it's hungary leading in great britain pressing on outside them they're about neck and neck by the look the view we've got from the commentary box maybe the hungarians are slightly ahead spain to their left spain tucked in the back and again it's going to be sweden who possibly suffer through this portage it's Hungary, Great Britain, Spain, the second Spanish crew in the yellow boat, and Sweden are going to arrive probably five or six seconds behind the first boat. Exactly the same as uh, the previous portage. Here we come, out of the boat, pick up the fronts, and run. Hungary away very well, Hungary, Spain, Great Britain. Now the second Spanish crew, and I think the Swedes did slightly better that time, but here we yeah, come. But, uh, they made the same mistake, uh, the front, the back, yeah, Padler, uh, Drinks over the head. Took her boat. Great Britain, to Spain, both well organised. And Hungary, Spain go left on the pontoon, Great Britain right. They really need to be leaving together. And it's the second Spanish crew that are going to struggle just a little to leave in touch with the others. Here they come now. Great Britain away, Hungary away, Spain and Spain. That's all going to be fine, isn't it? Straight yeah. into a formation. But it'd be interesting to see how the Swedes get on and the second Spanish crew. How much work are they going to have to do to catch up? And we saw Denmark doing that. Oh, it looks like quite a bit. Oh. So Sweden, where's the second Spanish crew? Yeah, they were there. They are there. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yep, there they are. Sorry. They have formed the diamond now. And it's the Swedes who are going to have to catch alone. That will be quite hard for them. Uh, probably they have been... Uh, outside that di diamond for the entire lap the previous lap and that is a tough you're exactly right they've had the hardest job already yeah. now they're behind again they've already caught up from the last portage and uh, yeah we were talking about the boat width difference the boats used to have to be a minimum width i can't yes. it's so long ago now i can't even remember how wide a k2 had to be but uh 60 i think okay i know k1s were 51 yeah exactly and, uh, but now there's no limit, apart from the fact that obviously you have to be able to sit in it. Mm. And the biggest difference there really was for the back paddler, because now it's almost like paddling mm. a K1 in the back, and it's nice and comfortable paddling position. The angles yeah. are much easier. But uh, it actually take taking away that f formal regulation or rule of uh, centimeters, uh, 51 for K1 and 60 for K2s, made uh, the sport more equal uh, for this uh, for each paddler, the size of the paddler actually, because a uh, smaller paddler can have a smaller boat uh, and a more narrow boat, uh, which uh, is a little bit more easy to paddle. So instead of uh, the system they have in rowing. Uh, where they have different weight, weight classes, uh, we uh, have uh, quite an equal sport uh, for uh, different sizes of the body. So it helped a lot. It always strikes me as odd that rowing have weight class. I mean, lightweight, heavyweight. What is that? They don't have high jump for short people, do they? No, exactly. So why? Why? <laughs> yeah, but but it is a big difference, and it could have been uh, also for canoeing. We saw a development where big guys like uh, Knut Holman, uh, Rudiger Helm, and these guys were very, very good in, in these boats, and it was really tougher and tougher for small guys to keep up with them. But uh, today, uh, it's totally uh, okay. Out, out I'd of never, importance. I'd never really. Mm. Realized that it was one uh, of the great benefits. Uh, yeah, it was one of the great benefits, especially for K1. And now the C2s is coming in for their po portage, and it's Hungary, Hungary in the lead, and they are staying well together, all three of them, Hungary and the Ukraine and Spain, as uh, precisely like uh, the previous uh, portage. Hungarians out first, nicely. Ukraine, Spain, also, an, also uh, nicely. A little bit of impressed. Spanish guy uh, gone right to the back of the boat. Yeah. And the front guys maybe he's trying to shoulder it so the water will pour yes. out because they, there's a little slope at the back of the c2s and the c1s and the water can just come out you don't actually have to turn it upside down but yeah not only do the small guys love the the narrow boats you know who loves them the most the guys who have to load the trailers oh yeah that's right because that's right. those old wide boats trying to fit them it was like a puzzle to get them all on the trailers now with the narrow boats every trailer man's an expert now yeah and using roof racks, you yeah. manage to have four boats suddenly on the roof instead of yeah. three. And storing so. boats in canoe clubs, it's just yeah. been fantastic yeah. for that. And and yeah, the biggest difference, even even than in the kayaks, was the C1s. They were vast, weren't they? They yeah. were hugely wide. Mm. 
They were in England. We used to call them pig troughs, the, the buckets that pigs eat from. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, they were amazingly wide and looked looked horrible, yeah. really. And now the C ones are actually because you only have to put your knee in it instead of your hips. They're narrower than the K ones now. They are, and the it's a bit like trying to kneel on a pencil. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, the reason for the old rules was to uh, avoid uh, the boats getting too uh, tippy. Uh, but um, and there was a lot of fear that the boats should be very, very tippy, take, taking away that width. But uh, that has not happened. Rather the opposite, actually. With the new, uh, the new boat constructor constructions coming in is more stable than many of the, the these boats used in the old days. I think by taking away a restriction, it got everyone thinking again. Exactly. And design came in again, and, and it, it just a, a development in the sport. But from from other points of view, I I used to be in the front of a K2, and I used to like sitting on the washes. With the old K2s, because you had the big volume behind you, it was much, much easier to find the washes, and it was much, much easier to get the feel of being lifted from behind, because you had that volume that wouldn't dip down into the water. Now with the narrow boats, it's that's not quite so simple and you have to work with theory a lot rather than actual feel so that's that was one of the downsides but i think the upsides far far outweighed that absolutely absolutely it's still a way to go on the taking away regulations i think it will be these boats um, for marathon it's eight kilos for a k1 and 12 for a k2 uh, for sprint racing, it's 12 or 18, and um, uh, it's unnecessary nowadays. We could have 10 kilos for everyone, I think, for K K1s. It's interesting. When, when I used to race, we it was still eight kilos back then. I mean, there was a period where it's unrestricted, yeah. and people were turning up in ridiculous four kilo boats yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's why the rule was brought in. Uh, absolutely, it became utterly expensive but, to yeah. create such boats, and also they were so fragile. They only lasted a year, yeah. if that, or yeah, maybe or, even one race. Yeah, exactly. But uh, even back then, I chose to have my K1 was 10 kilos back then, because they're not so lively on the waves, and they respond a little bit better to steering. And in, into Portage now, we've got C2s, and a long shot of the women's Swedes have caught up. And it's all back to a five-boat race again. And it's uh, Patrick Lusa and Simon Kostensi from Poland with the 656 there, and uh, Philippe uh, uh, Richard Smith and uh, Dori Benz, the uh, yeah. Balas Dori from uh, Hungary. Uh, the names and numbers of the C2s, you can't C2. see them, but they've just come in through the portage. So we're just trying to keep everyone informed where we can, give out all the information we've got. This is the second group of the. K2 women and as you can see Sweden is uh, into that group once again not only Quite into good. it but in the best position yeah, in the best position. so, so they, they need to relax yeah, yeah relax yeah. and rest a little bit we'll see how they manage the final stage of, of uh, the race we saw Denmark uh, this morning had a similar journey uh, they were a little bit outside the group but the finalized the race really really good at the start we saw 603 Lux and Cernak they were the quickest off the yes. start they were first past us which is maybe 30 40 seconds away from the start the other crews know that I guess yeah and they know that at some stage either they've got to wear them out or hope they wear themselves out because they're not going to beat them in a sprint finish so there's the time checks two minutes 50 now back to this group from the lead two Sakali and um, sorry, not Sikali uh, and Alberti. So I lost my train of thought there. And Say and Barra, well ahead, and not going to be in any danger of being caught. So the speed is um, it, when they passed here, here previously, it or uh, halfway through the uh, the previous lap. It, the gap was 2 minutes 11 seconds now it's, now it's 2.50 oh so uh, we got a screenshot there of Pretzman and uh, Langland yeah now it's unusual that they'd be brought back because they're tired they would paddle back so so you assume they either swam or they've got some sort of equipment failure I think so they're, they're just being dropped off 
uh, close to the portage ramp. That's what you can see in the foreground there. So they're not looking desperately unhappy with that, but uh, not their best day. They have had good days, both of them. Already before. this weekend. Yes. Yep. So Denmark is out of this race. We'll try and find out what happened for you, but uh, yeah, there's still smiles all around there. Yeah. They can crack on with tanning now. They're done for the weekend. <laughs> so I've just sent Stefan away to find out exactly what's happened. He's on a mission, the man. Uh, they can they can relax now. Obviously, explaining to the coaches who are holding the boats there what what happened. But these things happen. No one's going to be upset about it. A little bit disappointed, maybe. But uh, Stefan's hunting them down, and we'll come back with the answer as to what the problem was. Meanwhile, back to the C2 race, and everything as we left it. So, Ukraine, Shapoval, Levchenko leading from Doce and Kova, Hungarians in green and closest to us, the Spaniards, Grana and Ferro. Now the Spanish team maybe They've had so much success for so long. Grana and Ferro have been around for ages. The K1 guys from yesterday, Merchan, Alonso have been around for ages. And maybe we're seeing the end of an era beginning to close in here. And then the problem with having good guys at the top for so long is that in some ways it discourages the up and coming. There's no route into the team for them. So very often when a team has that, there's a bit of a gap after that where they have to regroup, rebuild their team, but maybe a couple of dead years where they don't get quite so many medals. But we'll wait and see. The Spanish aren't short of numbers. We've seen some good juniors, some good under-23s. So watch this space and we'll see what happens. So still lead K2s piling on. Next thing you're going to see in about a minute's time is the turn before the penultimate portage. So always up till now, Renato Zay is taking the lead. <laughs> well, here we go. Around now before the turn. And to me, that's one of the problems of the seven, six, seven lap races is each lap just becomes a repetition of the last. The routine's the same. The thought process is the same. Perhaps with some of the older races, A to B type races, or just out and back, it was different thought processes depending where you were around the course. But this just becomes a bit formulaic sometimes, especially when it's a two-boat race like this. It becomes an acceptance of what's going to happen from each crew. And we could be on any of the three previous laps here. It could be a recording, Zay leading, Sakali on the wash, as they leave that turn and head towards the penultimate portage. So after this, one big lap and one small lap to finish. And as ever, it appears I've made a slight mistake and there's two big laps to go. So even despite my writing all the numbers down and circling each portage as they go, I've still failed to keep you well informed. So thanks Brian for that public are now well informed it's two big laps and one small lap to go so Hungarians right Italians left as it has been on all the previous portages we saw after the last portage Renato Zay just have a little experiment a little test for the Italians she did that twice yesterday before making the final break they're out their boat well up and running Italians a little slow uh, it's not much, it's one or two seconds slow, but one or two seconds with someone like Renato Zay can lead to bigger issues Absolutely. later and, on. Uh, they are very, very w well aware of that. 
So they are running now as fast as they can. Hungary is taking some drinks there. Drinks is um, possible to take on the right uh, hand side for those of you who are recognize it's a fence in the middle of the portage. Uh, they need to run on the right side to get drinks and on the left uh, not to get drinks. That just separates all the uh, support staff from crews that just want to run straight through. There have been incidents in the past. So again, Zay is that's full on. And what, five seconds of full on? <laughs> it's not a massive test, is it? No. But, but uh, as she usual. tried it, she no. would have known the gap wasn't opening up. And, and now they're both a little bit of a, relaxing a bit. Bit of a standoff. Yeah. Got some information for all of you uh, that wondering what happened to the Danish crew. Uh, they just uh, got exhausted. It's very, very hot out there. It must be in some, something between 30 and 35 and, uh, and no wind and the sun is just heating everything up. So uh, their team coach said that uh, they were starting here to make a test, see if they could manage to, uh, to sit in the big group and the first, first stages of the races, so they weren't utterly unhappy. Uh, they were there they at the first stages of the, of, of the race, and they have had a good, uh, uh, a good uh, weekend anyway. And Lina Langelund is a junior, uh, and she's a junior also next year. So, oh, wow. So, uh, it's a little bit... Okay, too, so it's too kicking off in the women's second group. There's a lot of activity there. Hungary leading into the portage. Spain left to them, Great Britain right, Sweden tucked in the back this time, maybe a little bit safer than they have been up to now. And on the far side, on the right of that picture, is the second Spanish crew. Sweden is in they, quite really, good position They are there. pressing on. Perfectly positioned. It be interesting to see which side Hungary go here. If they choose the left-hand side of the portage, they could take both those Spanish crews and make life difficult for both of them. If they come right, it could be difficult again for the Swedes. But they are uh, quite good position there. Uh, flowing smoothly into the porches uh, right behind on the most easy wash. So it is Hungary going left. It's going to be difficult for the crew in the yellow boat. Very wise. They stopped very early. Great thinking from the driver of that boat. Now they just have to wait for the Hungarians a little bit. And they are in a spot of bother. But not too much. Swedes. Not last to leave the portage for the first time, so it's good news for them. They yes. may not have to catch up. At least if they do have to catch up, it might not be alone this time. So quick drink swap over from the Hungarians. Shake of the head from the back paddler there. She didn't want any more. She's still got enough left from last time. Great Britain, going to be second or third in, but the only only crew on the right, so they've got a clean entry. Right to the end of the pontoon. Boats in, sit in, and it's going to be Hungary away first, Great Britain away second, top Spanish crew third, and then the two that had slight problems in the entrance to the portage. We'll just see how much ground they have to make up. It's going to be five or six seconds, I think. They made a slight mistake, uh, the Swedish crew, also when they uh, jump in, into the boat. They put waited for uh, a second or so to get ro room of the bow instead of putting it uh, outside uh, the um, British uh, boat and uh, that made uh, that that made a difference here well two seconds is over a boat length yes and a boat length means one more wave to climb yes and it's the the, the cost of climbing over a wave is quite high always it is the Swedes are back in contact and the Spanish pretty much have used the Swedes this time to drag them back to the front group. And it's back to normal service. The British crew looks very strong. We know they are endurant. And while they paddle away from us, up to the top turn, I'm not sure what the second Spanish crew are doing there. They've moved out to the left. They fixed They're working hard. Yeah, they fixed something in their boat and then moved out to the left. And now they are on the fifth wash, so to speak, which is a little bit harder. And they were there at this stage in the previous lap also yeah. when they went around the top turn. So 
Another drinks bag in the water. Which is a bad behavior, of course. We shouldn't uh, pollute this wonderful environment. We should have been writing names down, Stefan. Yeah. We've got an ideal view to be doing that. So, as they leave, the lead group of C2s is only 30 seconds from the portage. And it's here we go. It's Ukraine, Hungary and Spain, just as it has been for so long. Spanish just trying to dip round the back of the Ukrainians, touch, touch the back of their boat and just disturb their direction. It's a little bit more effort into this portage now. You, and it's Ukraine that actually is setting the speed here. Spain now hassling the Hungarians for that side of the pontoon. You can see how much effort it's taking for the Hungarian to keep direction. Shapoval. Ukraine, first out, first up and running. Hungarian just putting his hand on front of the Spanish boat there. He obviously wasn't pleased with something. And there's still a little bit of uh, aggravation there. As the Spanish swap sides on the boat. To follow the Ukrainians down the right hand side of the exit portage. Exit of the portage rather. So Ukrainians definitely running like they've got intent to uh, at least test the other crews here but they're all away so close together I really think that's going to come together fairly shortly Currently no internet, so we can't provide you with the, the lap times. And look at that. Wow. They are yeah, relentless speed, isn't it? Yes. Look, who's hoping to wear who out there? You know, it's really strange, actually. They're, both, they're going to come first and second. Yes. What, what's the hurry? I did somebody's trying to do something mm. there. I didn't expect that There you go. They've They've worked really hard, excessively hard, and now they've said, right, Italians, it's your go. But you can see how reluctant the Italians are to go past. They're mm. feeling it. They yes. are. They're not happy. They know they've got to do their work. But maybe actually, uh, maybe uh, the Hungarians were fed up with the, the willingness to do the hard work from the Italian side and try, try to do something about it out there. This paraglider is directly opposite our commentary position. There's a clearing in the grass just on top of the mountain opposite where they take off from. And he's just dropping down the tree lined cliffs there. It's several hundred meters high. They are flowing with the very little wind into the fe green fields uh, behind us. And uh, this valley is really uh, something like sound of music uh, environment really nice lots of flowers and uh, green green grass in this forestry forested valley of Buchin. so we're looking at the second group chase group well chase is a bit ambitious they're not really chasing anymore are they no 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 let's, the, the let's call them the following group yeah, the following group or the second group and because the time gap increases all the time. Uh, for now, the internet is up again. We'll see how much it was so at the previous uh, passage. Lizzie Broughton, Fay Lamp leading that group. They've done quite a lot of work in that group. Really, I guess, they feel they have to do something to take the sting out of the yeah. Hungarian sprint finish. About uh, three, three minutes gap now. There's nothing worse if you finish a race and it pans out as expected, which from here would be the Hungarians winning, and you know you didn't try something. Mm. You have to at least try something. Give it your best shot, and it, there's only one winner in this group now. There's, there's, they're not, there's not a spare medal, so it's one place out of this group to play for, and unless you've tried to do something to make stack the odds in your favour, when you come across the line, it, it's really sort of a a depressing feeling then isn't it you just think you it know is. what maybe I should have given it a bit more so it is it's a little bit different now now uh, the British team 
uh, we expected them to be strong in the far end of of, uh, of the course. Yep. And uh, there they are doing the hard work. And also Sweden is a much better position now than in it, than in the previous laps. And looking quite relaxed yes. finally. Yeah. Yes. They've had they've had to work pretty hard. And now I think they enjoy this now. Yeah. For, for a couple of minutes, uh, just sitting there, wash riding, while the Spanish crew on the other sa side have been uh, forced to be on the outside. And now uh, the leading. The second group of the C2s is oh, in the portage. One of them's just dived in the water. You can't see yes, that. Poland. The other one also appears to be limping a little bit. They seem to have a few problems, the Polish C2. But uh, on screen, which is what you can see, obviously, is uh, the following group in the women's K2. And that is um, Feilamp and Lizzie Broughton from... Um, uh, Great Britain. It is uh, Dina Czernak and uh, Nermi Luc uh, from uh, Hungary. Both of them very exper experienced. Uh, Luc uh, having her first world championship gold medal as a junior in Singapore already 2011. And there you have them all. Michaela Lindblad uh, from Sweden were second in K1 last year in the uh, under 23 category and this uh, European Championships. So, all the paddlers up the far end of the course now, and the, the other girl in the Swedish boat there is Emma Andersson. Uh, she has been around a long time. I saw her first um, in the Perth World, World Championships no back way. in two, 2005, where she was a junior. She had some years where she educated herself to a military officer. And after that, uh, she got good sponsorship from the Swedish military to continue to, to uh, paddle. And focusing uh, long distances, long distances as marathon. Emma Anderson. Yeah, but if you look at you know Renata Zay, 37 years old, you say Anderson's been around for a long time, but she's still got 10 years yes, on, on Renata Zay. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, 10 years <laughs> is literally a long time. It is. Much to develop. Successively increasing the training. The amount of training. Training and experience and you add yeah. it all in to make it all add up to a performance. And a performance is made up of so many things. It's not just physical training, it's the mental training, it's the experience, it's the tactical stuff, it's learning about your equipment. It's, there's so many components to a perfect performance. And it is. To ignore any one of those components will always leave you with a tool short in your toolbox when you come to a big competition like this. Absolutely. The top group of the, the C2. Those C2. Ukrainians have been leading for over a lap now. Yes. The others content to sit with them. But I couldn't even guess a winner from those three. No. That's that's oh. uh well, I guess I could guess, couldn't I? That's a stupid thing to say. It's incredible how stupid you can sound when you when you got a microphone, but I don't have the knowledge of those crews, and you certainly can't tell by looking at them who's feeling the fresher. Gran and Ferro won last year with the Ukrainians Shapoval and Levchenko on, the, on the second position. Cover did, didn't uh, participate there. It was another uh, the second uh, Hungarian couple. Uh, uh, Balas Nagy and uh, Richard Schmidt, and they finished fourth. Schmidt, of course, here today instead of with Nagy with Dory. So Nagy, I think, yeah. did Nagy race the C1, or is he retired now? We'll try and find that out for you. I, I wish. Do you know what, Stefan? I wish I'd never asked that question. Now. I'll find out. <laughs> Among all the papers here. <laughs> We've got a very well organised desk here. 
with paper pretty much covering it. A couple of computer screens and the TV monitor where we see the same view that you see. So now we're looking back at the following group of the women's K2. And along with all the equipment, we got a couple of cups of coffee, a couple of bottles of water, and a bit of technical equipment for the sound. Yeah, no, Nagy was uh, doing, he was second actually in the um, C1 men under 22. Sorry for that, we should have remembered that, but it's so many cat categories, so many great moments to, to uh, remember from, uh, from this event. So into the portage, no surprises. It's Renata Zay leading Susanna um, Sicali, Stefania Sicali, sorry. And in they come. Sicali's motivation here must be just to stay, stay, stay with, with Zay there. And uh, Hungarians again out slightly before the Italians. Italians ditching their drinks. But they both, both crews run really well. There's been no gaps opened up so far on the portages. And it doesn't look like there's going to be a gap this time. Both support crews reasonably well organized, although the Italian support crew did seem intent on strangling Alberti with their own drink system there. They have been doing 21.8 uh, kilometers now. Out of uh, back in the boat, six push off, paddle on the same side. There go the Italians. They know everything for them hinges on not letting the gap open up, and it hasn't. So there we go, exactly the same routine as the previous portages. So one more long lap and one more short lap. And the short lap is just 500 meters, 250 meters out to the <coughs> out there to the final turn and then 250 meters of in the sprint to the finish line so you have to hand it to the Italians the, the Hungarians you can see from the speed they've been traveling sometimes have been taking it to them they've been trying to wear them out each portage is a little attempt but already within 10 strokes Zay realizes that that attempts futile the Italians are too strong to drop today or at least for this one more lap and so uh, we will experience a decisive final portage here. They have been doing 95 minutes now, one hour, one hour and a half in this uh, quite extreme heat, uh, in the otherwise perfect conditions for canoeing. And here is Jim Rossiter who is doing the uh, venue commentating. What is your opinion of the last lap? I think uh, that uh, Faye and uh, Lizzie have got to make a break over this voltage. They can't be afford to be there for the, the next voltage together. Something Jim's like just offering his opinion yeah. on what he thinks the uh, Great British crew should do here. He's got the same opinion as us. We think that probably if it comes down to a sprint finish, the Hungarians have got the edge. It, like we said there's only one medal from this group. It's not like picking up a second place in this group is any use to you really. So if Great Britain want to win a medal here, maybe they should make a move at this portage. But everyone's been portaging really well today. And we haven't seen too many mistakes. Maybe only the Swedes have been a bit sketchy in this group up till now. And so we will find out. But certainly time is running out for that British crew if they're going to guarantee themselves a medal. But Jim, that uh, used to be the, the team manager for the British team for uh, 30 years or so, 35 years. 75. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 35, Jim. 35. Yeah. Uh, his uh, advice to this British crew is to try to do something here yeah. in this uh, portage to be able to use the, their uh, ability to pedal fast over long distances. You uh, just see from the, the strength of those lap. Hungarians. So the British tried to come past a little bit, yes. doubled their stroke rate. The Hungarians just I think they eased listened up the Jim, speed. Jim, they listened. Everyone listens to Jim. Yeah, of course. Also, we have all is done for a century or more yeah <laughs> so in they come we'll talk a little bit more about Jim Rossiter later but for now 
It's back to the job in hand. And he's angry, and Sweden is lagging behind. I think bit. that's it for the Swedes, yeah. right? They're yeah. done. Yeah. They have to be done yes. this time. It looks like. So it's Hungary from Spain, from Great Britain, and from Spain. So first two out are going to be Hungary and Great Britain, I hope. But no, it's the second Spanish crew on the far side. They're out well. Great Britain struggling. Lizzie just only just got in touch with the back of the boat in time to stop the rudder hitting the ramp. And here we get them coming through the portage. So Hungary through the portage. Hopefully he won't strangle this crew with a drinks bag. They've front front girls shaking off her drink bag. She didn't want one. Girl in the back, she's taken on fluid this time. Pink and black boat, Great Britain, and the yellow boat of Spain. The time gap is uh, incredibly four minutes seventeen seconds now to the flying two in front. So Hungary away. Great Britain away. It took four strokes for Lizzie to get in paddling with Faye there. Yeah. And that's a really expensive four strokes for, for Faye in the front. It's really heavy to tow a boat when your partner's not in. I used to hate my partners if they any more than two and they were out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a lot of, a lot of co coordination in K2. So yeah, the gap to the Swedes, that's done. Yeah, it's done. They have given up. So they did well. They caught up two or three times. They got back to the group. They even looked comfortable in the group last time we saw them. But obviously, the weather, the effort, the distance has all taken its toll. And uh, they finally paid the price. Although, the front group stopped paddling for a while. It might help them close the gap. But into the portage now. For their final long lap comes the C2 race. This time it isn't the Ukrainians leading. This time it's Grana and Ferro. They've taken the initiative for this portage. Remember at the last one they got stitched up a little bit by the Hungarians and had to go take third pick of the portage position. But this time the second is the Ukrainians again. They've come past them. It's a very tight race in C2, D C2 here, here today. Quite unusual to see that. Hungary had to steer a little bit there and lost some ground. Some trouble with the balance there. Steering. Ukraine is keeping on. They are uh, answering to the efforts done by, by Spain there. They've looked the tidiest coming into the last three portages. Yeah. Spain are there. Hungary are going to have to readjust a little bit to dip in behind the Spanish. You can see them doing that, and the Spanish have slowed down so much, Hungarians have got to change their plan and go... Very good tactics of the Spanish there. Very good, and then just jump jump off there, and they're running very, Hungarians very fast. Hungarians struggling to get hold of the boat. Uh, now it's critical for Hungary to keep up. Now it's really critical because I think Spain will do a big effort after this portage. They t that was all what they were aiming for, doing that fine tactic uh, coming, in, coming into the portage. They're swapping sides with the boat. They want to get in on the right. Seemed a little unnecessary, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It was unnecessary and they struggled a bit with the paddle there. Maybe they are more used to fast jump in from that side. Or maybe the, maybe they knew the Ukrainians were there and wanted yeah. to disadvantage them as well. They've already stitched the Hungarians up yes. at the start. Ukrainians at the end, but no, nothing's happened. No. They'll they, all come they, out together. Yeah, they will be back back in together. So possibly the Spanish there, are a deliberate attempt to disadvantage yeah, both the other But crews. they are going now. They are, oh, now. Uh, no. Just for a couple of yeah. strokes, adjusting their drinks. It's very, very hot out there, so they really need to be careful on the drinking stuff. But it looks like they have established a, a slight gap. That was a little bit of experience yes. showing there. They they deliberately hassled the Hungarians yes. coming in. And the Hungarians are sides. also adjusting their drinks yeah. now. We know that Martin Cover just hate uh, this heat. But we also know that they are very, very strong, these Hungarians. Martin Kover and Adam Doce, who won the, this category in the World Championships in Oklahoma last year, and it was uh, very similar conditions. Uh, the heat of the mi Midwest US was um, really taking, taking its toll there. Do we think that's a gap, Stefan, or just they've separated I, I slightly? I think it's a gap, actually. 
it didn't look like uh, Hungary I, I, or Ukraine was really uh, eager to close the gap either. No. I think they're quite exhausted now, both of them. But so now, Hungary taking the initiative yeah. to close the gap, maybe? Yes, yes. Watch them they are. now. They're, now they're, they're actually working speed. hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are working uh, hard there. They, I think they, that was a mistake. They didn't see that the gap was going to open. Yeah, watch this. Straight over It was though. a little bit like uh, the Danish uh, pair that we saw doing the, that a lot of times. There was stopping, discussing stuff in yeah. the boat and adjusting stuff and lost, uh, could be uh, up to 100 meters. And then decided how to do it. And then suddenly they were there and, uh, again and won the race. And what class. I mean, they've come all the way from where the Ukrainians yeah. are now. Yeah, yeah. Straight oh, across to join the Spanish. Fantastic. Ukrainians aren't as far behind as the picture shows, but they're out wide to stop being on the washes, and they are with, without yes. a doubt behind now, yes. aren't they? So that was impressive. If that would be a bit of a warning to you, Absolutely. if you were any of those other crews, they've oh, got yeah. they've got some speed on them, those oh, Hungarians. Yeah. They were struggling a bit into the port. It's just steering and fixing yeah. things. Maybe they had to adjust something in their boats. Now it will be interesting to see, to watch the girls in their final upper turn. Meanwhile, we're very devoid of action back here. There's a Hungarian C2 coming around the turn into the portage. They're a good couple of minutes away and they're on their own, maybe 30 seconds ahead of the following crew, which could well be Polish. But that's going to be a while until we see them. And meanwhile, cameras back on the lead C2s. Those Ukrainians are definitely struggling. The washes are affecting them. They're having to change their direction to find some clean water. They have uh, done it now, and uh, I think they are trying to use the V wash there. You can see it that clearly from here, how they are using that. And look at that effort. They are skillful 1,000 meter paddles. They might be able to catch. I think they are. If they do catch, though, it's been a cost. There's always a cost to oh, everything yeah. you do. Oh, yeah. These are the Hungarians I was speaking about earlier coming into the portage. Would, would be interesting to uh, watch the girls now. They must be there somewhere up, uh, up in the upper turn. There they are. And that looks... Oh, no, it's still five. I couldn't see the boat on the outside for a while there. So... That five is boats. Second. Yeah. So is that so Sweden Swe again? Yeah. That have Sweden up. Managed, I mean, to, managed to get up. Oh, impressive. I'm amazed. Impressive or, or no one's taking the initiative. You'd um, think somebody would do something at this stage. They're, yeah. they're not all going to win the finish sprint, are they? I thought Lissi and uh, Faye should uh, try to use their ability to go hard <laughs> for a longer period of time. But Maybe uh, the heat's taken something yes, out of them yes. that they would normally have at this stage yes. in the race. Sweden is uh, now on on the outside there. The most wise thing to do for them is to challenge uh, uh, hung Spain, is it? Uh, Hungary. Hungary. Challenge Hungary for that side yes, wash. For that side and and um, making Hungary go down to the to the wash. To behind. the diamond wash, yes. which was forced the Spanish back, and maybe they could get comfortable and disadvantage the Spanish for a while. But we've seen the Spanish settled on the fifth wash anyway for a couple of laps, so. They're not pressed, and it does, just doesn't feel like the speed's enough to really hurt anyone out there now. And how is the situation in the top group? It would be interesting that as well. I don't have any Wi-Fi now, <coughs> so I can't follow follow them on this Here they are. The tracking system either. And still it's together. Still together. Thank you, Italians Brian. Italians leading the from the Hungarians. Even in the few days we've been doing this, the communication between us and the producer and the camera guy... It's, really things are getting better all the yes. time. And yes, very professional uh, television production company. Give uh, us a few more events and we'll actually be half decent. Yes. Well, I'm not sure if cameraman's got the whole focus thing going, going on for him there. <laughs> so, Italy, Hungary. You, you can only see that end in one way. Yeah. Yeah, but you never know. How many times have we been wrong this yeah. weekend? Ooh. We're Martin. probably Martin the worst experts you've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this morning. Yeah, we failed on every count. Yeah. yeah. 
that's Which the beauty of experts. Yeah, exactly. In our own mind, we're yes. experts, and that's yeah. what counts. And, exactly. Uh, and whoever whoever asks us to be here, they also believe we're experts. So, so if they're employing people who aren't experts, I, I'd say that's their problem. <laughs> so <laughs> guess, guess why Renata's taking the lead there? Yep, it's because they're just about to approach the final turn before the final portage. So as on every previous lap, Renata wants to get to that turn first. So here's the leading two C2s now. It's down to the two big guns. Ferro, Grana, Kova, Doce. It's close to five minutes gap now, which means that uh, the second... In the women's race. Yeah, in the women's wow. race. Five minutes uh, at the upper turn there. Or 4.45, but... Uh, which means that uh, they have, haven't pedaled that fast in that group uh, and that was maybe the reason for that Sweden could yeah. could uh, close the gap. So, soon, yep, exactly now, in fact, we'll see... I watched them, it's, it's so beautiful uh, watching them. Alexander battle. Barras, they're going to dominate round this turn. It could be lap two, three, four, five, and now six, and even for this last final seventh lap, every one of these turns has been the same for these girls. And in the World Championships last year, uh, Renata and uh, Alexandra uh, won. Um, uh, and second were Anna Kosiskova and Lenka Krochova from Czech. And third was Samantha, Samantha Cleese, uh, Reese Clark and Amy Ward from Great Britain. Not uh, only from Great Britain, from my club. From your Stefan. club. But and, uh, uh, what was interesting, what's really interesting with that is that Stefania Sikali was with them at the last portage. Yes. What happened? She broke her rudder. So, yeah, that's right. So, that's right. You know, things happen. And there's always rush, there's always panic. We've seen it before now, today. Watch this. And Sikali is having a go. She's having a go For at For the this. first time during this race, Sikali uh, and Alberti is um, challenging they're Renate. Not, they're not getting past, but they are definitely having a go at it. Absolutely. This will be a, this will be a decisive portage, a really decisive portage coming in side by side. So it's Hungarians in, just a few feet ahead of the Italians. Already out the boat, much cleaner oh. out the boat than the Italians. It's a yes. length, three quarters of a length lead for the Hungarians. Doesn't look much, but it's very significant. It is. No one will be taking drinks on this portage. Side Hungary running side. well, Italy also running well. Just a dose of water over the back of the neck, cool them down slightly, and they are neck and neck there. So there's still going to be panic getting into the boat. They know it's neck and neck. Uh, absolutely. It's, uh, this is going to be quite tight. Stay cool, stay a, cool, stay a cool. A mistake here. They've got to be calm, be calm, be calm. So Hungarians got hold of their paddles first, uh, exactly but wait the exactly the same time. So amazing. Can the Italians do anything with Zay? I think they can. They can. They can challenge. We saw that happen yep. uh, in one of the previous uh, World Championships, where the Danes had the same position and actually were able to beat uh, Renate. And uh, I think it was uh, Fuldum back then. But I think anyway. Sicali's got the class and the quality no, to at Barrow. least have a go. Yeah. What I doubt is Alberti's sprinting yes. power. That's yes. what's going to let the K2. Maybe that's going to be the difference here. Yes. We have seen that that nope. happens so they are not uh, it's not um, uh, impossible to beat them we saw Alexander Barra and Renate Shea got beaten by by uh, Danish crew some years ago and they, it was also close very close uh, uh, final portage back then last year uh, the time gap was uh, about um, five seconds uh, so it, they were together into the final portage also then, and we know that uh, Shikali uh, by, back then crushed their other. But through this portage cleanly, and still in with a shout. Hungarians got the inside of the turn. Does that's it a, mean anything, do you think? Inside of the turn? Mm? No, not really, I don't think so. I mean, th th it would be impossible for the Italians to overtake them round the turn, whereas if it was the other way around, there would be some chance, I guess, of an overtake on the turn. So at least 
if the Italians do come up, make a move to come up around the turn, the Hungarians can just move out and make the turn wider and wider. So it does give them a little bit more control, but really not a lot of difference. This is going to come down to the last 100 meters, I would think. So down in front of us, we got Ollie Harding. Come down to take a few pictures of the finish. Lost a lot of respect for Ollie yesterday. He was only in the water up to his waist, where the other photographer was up to his neck. I used to think very highly of Ollie, but uh, he's going to have to work for it. He did tell me at breakfast this morning, though, that the other photographer did wear a wetsuit. Uh, as Ollie here, stripped to the waist, bristling with muscles, carrying those heavy lenses. And bristling with muscles is also um, the K2 girls now. They're around the turn. Around the turn, yes. And it's just a minute or so, well, maybe a minute and a half now to the finish. How, how do you come past a K2 like that? Is there, is there, you got choices, I think. If, if you fancy your chances and you want to come down, you must drop back until you're almost off the wash then run down the wash so you generate some speed. Enough speed to come up and over the bow wash of the leading boat. Mm. You can't just do what they're doing now is trying to plough uphill. If you want to do it neck and neck, you've got to move wide and do it neck and neck. Yes. But Sicali is definitely, definitely having a go. This isn't, Absolutely. This isn't over. This, this is, is not so over. A very impressive. The Hungarians move. moving over close to them to try and disrupt them. Yes. They want them back on that wash. They don't need them moving out, which is what Sicali is doing again. And she's still having a go. This is tough. This is really this tough. Is you very can see tough. the bow of the uh, uh, Italian. Hungarians uh, again, just yes. pushing to the lead. Oh. You can see how they moved over on them. And, yeah, I don't know. That's, it's tough, but it's not unexpected no. in, a, in a condition like this. It'll be interesting if the Italians get upset by that. But again, they're coming back. Again and again. The Italians are not going to give this up. And now they are side by side, close to side by side. You know that it's if they're moving meters, over. It's just 50 meters to go and it's uh, Italy and it's uh, Hungary. This is a very close call. It's going to be Hungary. There's no way back now for Italy. But again, they're coming again. Here they come. Yeah, they come. It is going to be. It, can Italy do this in the last five meters? Yeah. It's Hungary, it's Italy. Hungary, it's going to be Italy. It's going to be Italy. It's going to be Italy. No, it's Hungary. Oh, Hungary. Yeah, oh, it's Hungary. Oh, oh my word. What a race. <coughs> oh, oh. oh, 10 centimeters or so over this 26 kilometers. 10 centimeters, and it's a victory for Hungary. And Sikali and Alberti managed to challenge uh, Renata Shea and Alexandra Barra the best way ever, I think, uh, during their career, except for from where they were beaten back in the days by Denmark. A great race and a great in sprint. The, it, this race had any, everything. That was unbelievable. We'll briefly talk about the other porches. The other girls are just coming through, the second group. They're just running through the porches. Now the Swedes have finally got out well. And you know what they did? They dropped the boat on the porches. Oh. They've just had terrible luck all the way through. So Hungarians in first. English just tripping. Great Britain just tripping. Nobody's going to catch the Hungarians from there. And if they do, they're certainly not going to overtake. So let's talk about the finish we've just watched. Absolutely unbelievable. Hungary by just inches there. Yeah, that's what we thought from the commentary box, but you can be sure, Stefan, that when the Hungarians moved out on the Italians, that shows a lack of confidence. They didn't know they could win. They had to do something else other than pull hard. And absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely brilliant there. You have to hand it to Sikali. And absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, Sikali did everything she could. Albertini in the back gave it her all. She added in. We doubted her ability to do a sprint finish, but she showed that it's in her. At the end of a race like this, to do speed like that is absolutely phenomenal. I enjoyed that tremendously. Oh, it was amazing. Fantastic. Just uh, the way it should should be done. I think possibly we were shouting incoherently at the end there. We were too <laughs> excitable. But you, you could see it for yourselves on screen. That was absolutely brilliant. But third place looks like that's going to go to Hungary. Hungary ahead of the chasing pack of three, which is the two Spanish boats in Great Britain. That's going to be a tight finish for fourth, fifth and sixth. But it's going to be Hungary. And into the last portage come <coughs> the Spanish and the Hungarian C2. So this is everything to play for now. It's Spain and Hungary. We've seen the Spanish again take Hungary to the side of the portage to inconvenience them. So it's Spain, Hungary, 
Hungary we saw had fantastic speed after the last portage but Spain have got so much experience so much wisdom only two boats and they can still disadvantage the Hungarians coming in they'll be running through the portage there'll be no drinks just a bit of spray over the back of the neck keep them cool Hungarians are running hard to make up the deficit they're both left hand side maybe the Hungarians should have swapped to the right hand there see if they could make some impression on them they're gonna have to be a length behind oh and they put their boat in on the inside of the Spanish oh away they've lost a length it's gonna be a hard length to catch Spanish away Hungarians following we know the Hungarians can close them down this is also gonna come down to a last hundred meters And all through this excitement, we've only got hang gliders lighting, landing in the finish area. So it's excitement on all fronts. Heading towards us now is the Hungarians coming in to take their third. Fourth place is being contested. It looks like it's going to be Great Britain from here. So it's Hungary from Great Britain. Great Britain making an excellent effort to close them down. It, it's going to be too late for them, but they're ensuring their fourth place. So it's going to be Hungary one, Hungary three, Italy. Got to hand it to them for that second place. That is a brave, brave second place. I'm going to keep talking about that even though it's not on screen. Absolutely fantastic. That had everyone in the crowd going. Here it's going to be Hungary, beautifully tidy paddling. They've only got to keep it going like that to the end. They're not going to be challenged by the Great Britain crew behind them. But Great Britain have broken away from the two Spanish and they're going to take fourth place. Oh my word, these two girls have taken fourth place so, so many times. It's heartbreaking to see from the camera. It's, I don't even want to count the number of fourth places these two have had. They're being chased down by Spain, but they're not going to make any ground on them. The two C2s now headed up to the top turn. We're just going to watch Hungary come across the line. 50, 30 meters to go here. The C2s are both together up at the top turn. It's Hungary, Hungary now. Just making the last few strokes across the line. They're done. They're pleased with that. They were always the strongest sprinters in that last group. Followed closely by Fay Lamp, Lizzie Broughton, and then the Spanish crew. 606, that's Arquero and Massages. And 608, that's Velachi and Fernandez. There was an, ine an inevitability about how that group would finish in the end after a few slow laps. It played into the hands of the Hungarians. They took advantage of it. And now up at the top turn, now it's Spain. Hungary going around their outside. Spain leading out the turn. Hungary on their left-hand side. It's going to be Spain. Spain are too wise. They're going to keep squeezing and squeezing Hungary. The moment Hungary move away from them to do a sprint, the Spanish will move over on top of them. They've done this before, I'm sure. And Alexandra Barak, first, uh, congratulations uh, to Meanwhile, the gold medal, Ale Alexandra. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very, very hard race, but I think every marathon race is very hard. Just uh, now the weather is very hot. And I feel every time oh, it's very warm. Uh, but I'm very, very happy. And uh, congratulations for the Italian group. <laughs> If and, I, uh, Anna, if you, I can, um, never g gave up. Uh, you were on and on and on uh, during the last 250 me Stefan! meters. It was amazing. Uh, yes, I was very tired because yesterday I was in K1, but today uh, is a new day and uh, the competition uh, was very hard, difficult, but so I'm happy. Congratulations, we need to concentrate on the uh, in sprint of the C2s now, so congratulations girls. Okay, we kind of missed the vital part of the C2, but the Spanish took it out of the turn, but the Hungarians we saw earlier in the race had so much speed, they've moved out wide, they've overtaken them, they went so wide the Spanish couldn't move on top of them, and within 10, 15 strokes the Spanish knew they were beaten, Hungarians victorious, they're coming across the line, beautifully coordinated, They've played the race well, they've played everything as it should have been done, and they've come across the line.
beaten their arch rivals, the Spanish, into second place. The Spanish knew they were beaten. The moment the Hungarians took on that end sprint, the Spanish, they tried to respond. They had nothing left. And the paddles were down, the heads were down, and they've accepted second place. They'll be reasonably happy with that. They've been second before. They've been beaten by an absolutely top world-class crew. And the two giants of the sport come first and second yet again. And coming in in third place a little way back. They've been third before. They're third again. It's the Ukrainian crew of Shapoval Levchenko. And they've got about 100 meters left to go. Third position, uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, who had a silver medal last year, but now uh, uh, bronze. And I think they are very, very happy. Uh, these guys have been uh, fi finalized so well in uh, these very hot uh, conditions. Andriy Shapoval and uh, Alexander Levchenko from Ukraine. We'll soon have some more interviews, this time uh, done by Ivan Lawler to the C2 men. Uh, we are, have just finalized uh, the competition for the medals in the European Championships Canoe Marathon here in uh, Bochini for this midday session in excellent conditions but very very hot. As the girls said uh, in the interview, it was one thing to compete and another to combat uh, the heat. They did it very well and we experienced a very, very tight uh, in sprint. As well, uh, the C2 race was uh, exciting. The three crews staying well together. And we'll soon have an interview with them by Ivan Lawler. So, Marton, fantastic win, and against the rivals that you've raced so many times. Both these crews are really good, right? Yes, we enjoyed the race. 
the Ukraine was was a surprise because we didn't know them and they did a very good speed and uh, Spanish all, always good so the race was hard okay and we saw before the finish that you had a good speed very good speed when you caught up after one of the portages and then on the finish sprint did you know you were that fast were you sure you were fast? We practiced a lot to be fast at the end, yep. but uh, we we didn't think about that could we win. We we just wanted to do the fastest way as we can the end. Okay. And then at the portages, the Spanish are clever, right? They always push you yeah. to the outside, and then they, with the Ukraine, they did the same at the other end. Is they are they always like that? They did what 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 they should do. <laughs> if, if I am, if I were them, I, I would do the same. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's how marathon racing works. These guys are clever guys. They're not just strong guys, but they're clever guys. And this is what counts in the marathon racing. Marathon racing is not all this. Marathon racing is half this. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Ivan. And um, that concludes um, the midday session here from from Lake Bohin. Okay, I'm standing here with Keith Moore. Actually raced yesterday in the men's K1. It was tough out there with the heat. Oh, everyone's saying the same. And you've worked a lot with the girls that have just finished. And they finished fourth. How many times have they finished fourth and how heartbreaking is that? I think, yeah, it, it, they find it hard coming in fourth because, you know, they put a lot of hard work in from race to race. And uh, I think the domestic scene we have in Britain uh, allows them to get used to racing a lot more. The training groups they have, they're a lot more structured in the way they move around the groups. And I think they expect that more from when they come to the internationals. And then when the international girls don't do what maybe they're expecting, it kind of, they're asking questions like, well, what am I meant to do? If, some, if you're coming down on someone, where do I go? Am I doing the right thing? And we're kind of saying, yeah, you are doing the right thing. Partly though, I mean, They've raced those same girls a few times. You have to learn your opponents as well. So part of the blame, I guess, has to sit with them. And that's the learning process. That's training, that's racing, and then moving on. I mean, our, our team as a whole, Great Britain team, I'm, I'm not neutral as the uh, interviewer, you understand. I am from Great Britain myself. It's a lot stronger than it has been. You yourself are putting a lot of work. You've got a couple of sponsors. I know you've got Precision Hydration on board. I know you've got Joma, the clothing people here on board and you've done a great job and it's lifting the whole team and a lot of teams could benefit from that sort of stuff. How much effort have you had to put in? Yeah, we, we put quite a lot of effort in early on um, to, to making sure we get some more team support. Um, we don't get the funding of some of the other disciplines so it's important that we get that on board and it's important for the team as well because we want the team to develop, we want people to be competitive. If we want to challenge the faster nations, we want to challenge Hungary, we want to challenge South Africa, we want to challenge Spain, we want to move Britain back to being the number one nation like we were 10, 15 years ago. Bring it on Keith, <laughs> bring it on. Let's make Great Britain the number one nation and thanks for you for your time and congratulations for your race yesterday and good luck. And bring it that bring that on uh, might um, create another big nation fighting for four medals in all categories as we have seen Hungary and Spain doing during these uh, European championships many other nations as well of course uh, doing uh, great efforts to uh, come back to glorious uh, results in many categories so once again then um, Welcome back at 14.30 for K2 Men.